The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay the Red Santi, host of Turnbuckle Tabloid. And as you know, here on our show, we are big fans of music. Pop, R&B, reggae, rock, whatever have you, we love to play it here on the show. But what we want to play is your music. And how can we do that? So you guys want to take and share in our Patreon. Ladies and gentlemen, go to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. And just give us a small donation and we would love to share your music on our show whether you're an artist you're a singer you're a rom you're a producer whatever it is that you guys do in the field we want to share your music to the masses and our hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of listeners and viewers and followers so make sure you go to our patreon at patreon.com forward slash thermal tabloid and be a part of our show as much as we want to be a part of sharing your talent. So, hope to hear from you guys soon and enjoy the show. What's going on, guys? Rich here for RageWorks. Thank you guys for checking out Turnbuckle Tabloid, the hardest wrestling podcast on the RageWorks network. To find out more, visit us at RageWorks.net and follow Turnbuckle Tabloid on social media. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Tis the season, everyone. And in every Latino household, when this season comes around, it only means one thing. The hustlers come out, ladies and gentlemen. This is when all the coquito and the patele sellers come out. And your boy Jay the Red Santi does the same thing. So, yes, I, I am I am not afraid to admit it. Yes, I am doing the same spiel, and I am doing my hustle. I got to get my coquito are, on. Are, are the holidays more of a hustle for you than a celebratory thing? It's a fucking hustle, man. Fire sticks, coquito. I got the fam with the... So you, know, with so you, the don't, you, don't, you don't deck the holes in terms of the holiday spirit. You just want to make a good dime on the side. Fuck <laughs> yeah, get that bread. Hell yeah, fuck so that. You, so, you, you know, you, so you've never been a fan of the holidays? Like, I mean, uh, as a kid. I mean, it's still time to enjoy with family, you know, mom and and the new year. Get the fuck out of here with this twenty twenty shit. I know it's not important as you get older, like as we were as children, but listen, you don't get you don't get as much gifts as you did anymore. Yeah. You don't even worry. Yeah, but yeah, but isn't, isn't it great to give gifts? Yes, that's what I'm they not... that's what they tell me apparently. But my bank doesn't like, say the same shit because the more money I go out for gifts, the less fucking comes back in. So it's just uh, no, not really. Nah, it's it, it's cool. The best, feeling, the best feeling is giving someone a gift. And then freaking out, like, and then losing their mind. Like, I, I love that uh, that feeling. Like, no, the worst like, feelings when you give somebody a gift and they give that fake, uh, celebratory feeling is like, oh, this is, this is nice. Oh. So when when everyone gives me the fruit cakes, or whatever what the fuck they're called. What a uh, bunch of gay men? What are you talking about? Fruit cake. <laughs> you know the fruit cake. Fernando <laughs> and fucking um. La and, and Renee come over and shit. <laughs> I guess uh, Billy and Chuck or some shit yeah, like no, that. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's fucking Orlando Jordan and shit. I mean, oh god, that TNA gimmick was wild. Um, I I loved it. I thought it was fucking hilarious. I used to love uh, that shit. What's that chains? He had the warning tape on his cock. That, no, that guy was a real the gem. The best part is when he sh uh, he had Rob Terry as his um as his sidekick as his one of his lovers or whatever the case may. Or he or it was, I don't know if it was no it it was they were they were shooting an angle. That's what it was. It wasn't he was one of his lovers. But he was sitting there trying to um, persuade him to come to his side, and he shot whipped cream, and the shit went up his fucking nose. It was so mook. Yikes! <laughs> it was Yikes. so that, mook. That sounds like a that sounds like the mookiest thing I've ever heard in my it life. It was a mess. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds um, that sounds uh, pretty uh, pretty mook. If Jing I do say so myself. Jingle right? bells. But uh, like like I, I like 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 this year I kind of went like 
not ham. Like I kind of went like I went more with gifts just because. Um, not only do I have the fun, I, I don't even. I really don't kind of broke, uh, but like I'm kind of blessed. Like I, I, you know. And I was thinking about it the other day. Like, like I don't know. Whenever I watch those Christmas movies that like <laughs> a kid gets like a mitten and gets mad happy for getting the mittens, I'm like, damn, I'm fucking spoiled, bro. Like <laughs> I'm a spoiled, oh, I'm a spoiled thank brat. Thank you for keeping me hands warm during yeah, this exactly. holiday like, season, how did, sir. Yeah, but, but how does that how, how does that make me feel watching that and then going over to my tree and I have fucking like Christmas, AirPods and fucking like Christmas time. I don't give a fuck. I'm like, oh, great. It's said, sad. Like, Aim high, I, I, kid. I, 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 Aim high. You should have went. You should have asked for that PS5, bro. <laughs> but 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 especially this year, it's like oh, some kids don't even have food on the table, bro. No, it's, it's, this it's, this this is where it gets really you know when you you start self evaluating about yourself and. You start looking at the fucking landscape, and you're like, "Fuck, this is this is this is some really tumultuous shit we're going through, man." Yeah, it's bad, especially like you know, like uh, this year was probably the worst. Uh, was this the worst year you've ever been a part of in your life? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. Like, um, there, had to be a, there had to be a tie for like '87 or something. Yeah, I don't know, right? yeah, saying. pretty much. I mean, 2015 was be. 2015 was bad because I lost my grandmother, and then I lost, uh, I, you know, my you my, me, my, my, my relationship ended. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, met me was around it, 2015. Was it 2015? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the first time I came to the studio, your grandma was just passing away. So. Yeah, it was at the we were at the precipice of this illustrious friendship. Yeah, there you go. That was the beginning it's, of the, of it all. It's funny because I I had someone hit me up and they were like, um, I have a question to ask you. Uh, you're my Urban Dictionary. What does um cap mean? And I had to explain. Oh, it means like front and uh, really. How do you yeah. know this? I said, do you not? Do you not see my friends? None of them are over the age of forty. <laughs> we tell we tell Red about the uh, about the the new words like yo I'll be capping boy. Yeah, don't, yo, don't, yo, don't, don't be capping son. Yo 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 no cap son. I swear to God man we gotta get the show out this week no cap. Online man, like, like no joke like all I see are emojis now with the blue hats like the blue caps on uh for the emojis because everyone just says that now no oh, cap no cap no cap uh, no ca and I'm going like oh, okay and they're like oh I thought it was because they meant that. You're gonna shoot someone. I said, yeah, it used to mean that. They just changed it. It, it, it changed it. Yeah. It's like um, it changes with. I still don't. Like, I don't understand like a, where it comes like from. South, it's like the episode of South Park where um, the the boys want to start calling the bikers the f word, uh, f a d. I can't yeah, say that loud. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, and they have to they have to go to like the, the the royal fucking man of the dictionary to change it from the from gay people to bikers, and they end up changing the f word to the Harley riders. It's like <laughs> the, the words change, the words change with time. It's 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 yeah. I'm uh, I remember like when ratchet meant a gun, it meant like to hold now a it's gun. An ugly bitch. <laughs> yeah, or ghetto chick, and it's like yeah. or ghetto dude. It's like oh okay. Well, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So I don't know if you saw my TikTok I made, but I I, I had to react to this shit because um, the TikTok was the guy. It was a guy in New York, and he goes, by the way, he this kid's like maybe 15 years old. I'm like yo, he goes, you ain't from New York if you don't say suck my dick. I was like, oh, and you walked. <laughs> he did the walk away. Nah, and I said, I said, you ain't from New York. If, uh, you ain't from New York if you don't want to fuck this dude up for saying those three words, son. <laughs> that's fighting words. That's fighting words in this neighborhood. Fuck out of here, bro. Don't you dare say those words. No, the word, the words is a, a friend of mine posted on Facebook. He goes, can you women, or, well, not women, can you girls please stop telling dudes to suck my dick? Like that is so <laughs> fucking stupid. And I'm like, that's true. yes, I hate that more than anything in the streets. Bro. A chick that tells a, tells some dude or some other chick to suck my dick. And I'm like, what What does that what? even mean? It doesn't. What does that just, even mean? Just like the argument you had on Facebook with the wrestling about the rest about the gamer gamer fandom. You were like, what the hell does this even what mean? What does that even mean? This week, oh my God, this, this is what leads to uh, episode 202's cutting a promo, which will be uh, yeah. the hypocrisy. And wrestling fans, it's just gonna be ridiculous that it's, conversation. It's, it's yeah, well, you're, I know you weren't happy with AEW this past week. No, I, no, no, not, I, for the, not for the most part, but like in certain areas, you were man, happy I, with I, the. I like I said, I I just think that the way that wrestling fans look at the the the, the difference between the promotions and how they <laughs> basically co-sign with one and give the other one shit. It's how fucking Trumpers look at fucking COVID and what the vaccine is, and you know the the liberty, the 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 
the Democrats and the the, the 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 individuals who believe in this shit is like, yes, we got to go for it, and the other ones sit there and go, well, I'm not gonna go for it, but I know it's around, but I don't be, I don't, I don't, I don't really like it, uh, but I know it's around. But yet, if Trump fucking sat there and said, put a mask on, yeah, we're gonna go put it on a fucking mask now. I was like, what? what? I'm done. No, like, <laughs> no, your man said, don't. If your man, you don't want Sting and fucking. WWE, but yet you love him in AEW. What the fuck? I, I don't know. I, I just, like I say, it just, just like, fucked me up for a minute. I, I feel like that would be more effective if it was like Goldberg came out. Like, I, I feel like no one ever complained about Sting being in WWE. I mean, they complained more about Goldberg because at least Sting's like, you know, has a good, re- a good past record of being a good wrestler and a, one of the greatest. So even if he is walking in a wheelchair, I feel like they're going to cheer him. But like oh. Goldberg, that's a good example for me because it's like, yo, they hate this old mook it's squashing nigga. Any oh, old. excuse my language. But I'm going to guarantee you in AEW, if Goldberg comes out and squashes Jungle Boy, people are going to go, yeah! Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. But we'll, we'll we'll have that conversation later on in the show because we'll discuss it on um on Around the Square Circle. But uh, other than that, welcome everybody to another episode of Turbuckle Tabloid. I am your host, Mr. Ear to the Mat, the King of Talk Style, and as always, the cheap thrill, Jay the Red Santee. And I am the Mook with the mic. I am the Funko Hub, Matt Olski. And in case you guys haven't noticed, uh, Olski is not in studio. He's still suffering from chlamydia, so we don't want him anywhere near the studio. We don't. We want to keep him away from us. Uh, him yeah, is, well, him is, an, we're... him is an infected genitalia. We don't want anywhere next to us. Infected genitalia. <laughs> we don't want him. To... I, I, I don't put. I put hand sanitizer all across his microphone and his chair. We want to make sure wow, that that's does crazy. Come we make sure when his... I come back, mm-hmm. I'll make sure to be clean. Make sure his uh... balls are nice and clean for everyone to get with. No, um, no, it's it's just one of those. I said, you yeah, know, it's my work weekend, and I said, Matt, don't kill yourself. It's fucking raining outside. Or just stay well, I thought, I thought I, it sounded like you were had to do something like later this evening, so I didn't want to like come out over there for you to rush out. No, 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 no. It had nothing to do with that. Like I said, no, it was gonna, it was gonna be. It's in New York, in it's New York City, right now, it's right pouring now. right now. I wouldn't want you to be yeah. driving or, or getting an Uber for this shit. And there's only gonna be a couple of hours anyway because we could do the rest. Um, tomorrow. tomorrow But it's yeah. crazy because I'm telling you For you guys Thank you guys Who've been listening Following and being a part Downloading and streaming The shows 200 episodes But before I get into that Let me just do the quick run now But uh, make sure you check us out On all our social media outlets Check us out on the Light group page On Facebook uh, it, What the fuck happened With Facebook trying to flag us What the hell was that Facebook gave us like a legit Warning, a warning. I was like what like a, a really bad warning I don't know what That was like it's like fuck you! I'm not wearing a mask. Fuck out of here. Yeah, uh, that was not, no, that was like a red flag in terms of like they wanted to shut down our entire page for some reason. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what it was. I woke up before work and I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this? I thought I hit a button by accident. That's why I was like, I I don't know what the fuck this is. I don't know. Yeah, that shit was a little suspect. But I was it, like, but what, I, what I wasn't even sure whether it was the 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 page or was it the group it because the page. It was if it's the page, I'm like, eh, okay, whatever. I mean, that's that's I just. Think, the... I, I think it's the page, like, because uh, I know our profile pictures on the group and and and, and other one is different, and the one that was it was our ter- the the page's yeah. logo. I was so, that I was weird. I was like, what the fuck? I said I, there hasn't been anything because it's saying uh, you're not representative of your content. I'm, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Now you're nitpicking, motherfucker. Yeah. All right, like, uh, have you not noticed that everything's been fucking wrestling? What are you talking about? I, like, I don't know. Any case, oh yeah, like uh, I said, I just thought it was me. I thought I hit a fucking button. Social media's been really um, strict lately. TikTok, you can't say a curse anymore. They cut your, they they cut your video off. Funniest thing I saw was uh, that was hilarious. That they actually, they, isn't it that they have a a bleep now? Yeah, on Instagram, you there's a filter where if you curse, it bleeps you out. On Instagram? Uh, it's not on TikTok. People are using it on TikTok. People oh. are saving their videos on Instagram. Like, like people are using the, the 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 sound on Instagram and saving that video and then posting it on TikTok. Oh my God, the, the sissified of the nation, ladies and gentlemen, the sissified of the nation. I, love, I prefer. I don't know about you, but like with humor and stuff, I prefer the censor beep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. not only my imagination runs wild in terms of what the fuck he said, it's yeah. also a thing where it's like I just find the beep funnier. I do. I that's what it is. Stuff. I I I I like to hear the beep. It's funnier. Like for me, like on AEW, I would prefer Taz to get the, the beep, then the, or the boop, then yeah. the cursing. Yeah, it, uh, that's it, that's, that's funnier for me. But of course, everybody will be like, "Oh no, we're not kids. We can't." Yeah, but it's just funnier to hear the beep, though. It is funnier to hear the beep, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Whenever, whenever I would watch a show and the beep would come up, I would piss myself. So make sure uh, you check us out also on the Instagram at Turnbuckle Tabloid Podcast, as well as on Twitter at 
Remember tab. Also, be sure you check us out on TikTok. I just mentioned it. We are we are on TikTok as well. Just we have you know. We just throw up fucking audios up at the end anyway. Just go. to go TikTok give you guys clear. One day I'm gonna sit and learn how to use this shit and just do fucking TikTok. wrestling. Yeah, and just do wrestling yeah. videos. I'm just yeah, gonna. Bro. I already have ideas for certain. Like Hank, Hank Flanagan changing outfits. Oh, that'll be nice. That that'll be nice. From his casual gear, they make him jump and he goes into his wrestling gear. Into a wrestling Ooh. gear. I wanted to um. I, I want to do something like a day in the life of a lucha star or some shit like wow. that. Wow. That would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, so, yeah, make sure you check us on TikTok. Also, check us out on YouTube. YouTube uh, numbers are slightly growing up. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. <laughs> just YouTube, is, YouTube is in our per. Yeah. Our, um, our bread and butter. Our, I don't care. Butter. Wait, just yeah. make sure you get, you get us there as well on, on Turnbuckle Tabloid. But our bread and butter is on all the podcasting outlets, Spotify, Google Google Podcast, no more Google Play, no more Google Play Music. It's done. Wow. Yeah, they wow. shut it down. They what finally, the it, yeah, they've been saying it for the month, uh, for the most, um, the most part for like the last couple of months. They were like, listen, transfer your shit, because you're not gonna be using it anymore. And finally, on December, I think it was on December second, they finally shut it down. Get on that Spotify, boy. Get on that Spotify, boy. Yeah. So it's out of that. You'll get us on Google, uh, Google Podcasts. Um, you get us on um, Amazon Music. We're on there as well. And Audible, Audible. We're there. We're everywhere, right? Fam, we're all over the place, B. We're no everywhere. Excuses. No excuses, Ben. No excuses. Make sure, you, make sure you. Make sure No, he actually gave an excuse. Uh, an, not excuse. An explanation of why he doesn't listen. He told me that he's more in tuned on being interactive with the show rather than just listening. Because he feels as though that he's bringing you, bringing us more content when he's on, and it's right. he prefers to hear us live than to hear us on a playback. And he says it's not just us; it's everything. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, whatever. I respect you. That's cool. Uh, so make sure you check us out on all those podcasting outlets, and also check us out at if you don't get us there, get us at RageWorksNetwork.com. Is where you get all the. Podcasts from the RageWorks Network. Call me when it's over. Black is new. Black toys and tax. Um, Trek Untold, and of course you get us at Turbo Tabloid. I was thinking, man, I do kind, I do miss TRSS though. I miss the regular season sportscast. I do. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great. Uh, it was a great sports show, man. Yeah, it was, awesome. it was fun. It was a great album. Now, and now NBA's coming back near Christmas. Baseball's gonna be back next season. Football's already going on right now. You know, yeah. it's uh. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'll do it like I, a. I was, I was thinking you would do like a, a biweekly or a monthly, and just catch up on all the, all the like the rankings and shit like that. You don't need to do weekly. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe if I do it like a, um, like a thirty minute smart, just do like a thirty minute um, hit of it. Catch up with sports. Yeah. About like, uh, it's fun, man. Especially sports are coming back. Yeah. There's, a, there's an opportunity there, so. Maybe, maybe we'll see, we'll see. But make sure you make sure you check us out there, and um, if not, you always got our rage works. Dot net, which has all our articles, reviews, content. That's all things that is coming down the line, and everything that's in TV shows, movies, uh, comic books, video games. Everything. There's a lot of man, video games and movies and shit. There's been a lot of shit happening. Warner Brothers is now telling fucking movie theaters, fuck off. We're not only gonna fucking be in movie theaters. I'm we're gonna be that. HBO Max. You have HBO Max? Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I do, and it's it's fire because. I think Wonder Woman's coming out on Christmas, so yeah. I'm gonna watch that shit on Christmas. I'm I'm mad hyped for that Wonder Woman. I don't know about you, but that shit looks amazing. Well, Wonder Woman, the, the first one was actually really good, surprisingly really good. good. So. Now this, this next one looks phenomenal. Um, and to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if if other movie companies, uh, if other um, production um, companies take suit, like will join in them. Listen, because, let me the, tell you. Listen, man. people are gonna be scared to go to the movie theaters for ever. For what? Well, listen. For 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 quite for, you know for for quite some time we've been living in this hibernation mode and to be honest I'm fine I've just ran through Animaniacs I was I'm fucking finished that <laughs> it's like it, it, nothing's changed for me so this has just been like I do miss a little bit of the social aspect like I no have no I no no. <laughs> no I never did it I I haven't done it in years anyway so. I mean, and, and anybody... I, I, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not an outvert. I don't go. I don't like going outside. But like, you know, there, there are a few days where I'm like, eh, fuck. I, I, I'm. To me, it's like, you know, I, I, I don't really. I never really went out and did shit. And whatever I wanted to do, I still can do. I go fucking, fucking pop hunting, or go out and go get video games, or whatever. Fucking, I still do it. But as in to like go to a bar and all that shit, I wasn't. I didn't really do that shit that much anymore. I wasn't really doing. Yeah, I'm not a bar person. I like. Uh... I mean, although I do enjoy 
maybe once in a blue moon to go hang out and shit, but it's like I I I, I can I don't I miss, miss the, it. I miss the comedy club. That, we went that, that I do. Day. That I do miss doing. That we that we can. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah, we we could do that. That um, my boy just my boy was was over the other day. Shout out to my boy Slow, my man Smack, who hooked me up with this jersey right now. It's a throwback jersey. You guys can't see it, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a throwback jersey from a, a long football era I once played, back when men were men. The um, he works in he works for the Department of Education, and he says he says uh, you know what he goes. I prefer, and I think that it's better for the long run, that this stays the same, that these kids don't go back to school. I mean, right. for the most part, for those who can remote learn and are able to retain the information stay easier, stay home. Let them learn that way. It's a hit or miss. So I feel like it should be optional. I well, definitely do, I definitely well, it is. Think it, should optional. it should be optional. But the, what they're saying is for those no, who really learn at home for shit. Yeah, but though, yeah, for those who really need it, yeah, go to school. I think kindergarten you need to go to school in person. You know, oh, you're yeah. not getting the same. You're not getting the same experience. Like I, I'm dealing with kindergartners at my job, and it's obvious. I feel I feel really bad. Like they're not getting that. They're not getting those precious moments that like, like I remember as a kid that like really helped me learn. Like those group projects were finger painting or being a, 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 a celebrating a kid's birthday in person. Like you could tell the kids are just out of it, and it's hard for them to learn. They're not in the per in there with the with the teacher to guide them. No, no, no. kids That's that okay. age. When you're, yeah. when you're older, like fifth grade and up, yeah, you can stay. At home. Yeah, kids that age is yeah that they they need they need that that attention. But you know, make it an option, or if they're gonna do the 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 blended. I mean, I, I believe me, I think. I think it works so much better for a lot of kids, especially for those who, who don't need to be there full contact and prefer like super producer Sally's like I'm good, I'm alright. Yeah, I, exactly. I'm just the only thing that I would want her to have some kind of connection with is with um high school. Hold on a second. What? Hold on. We're back. Yeah, FedEx hits up my fucking doorbell. It has nothing to do with me. So that's wow. My neighbor shit. I hate when they do that. So yeah, no. Um, back to what I said. Yeah, it, it, you know, super producer. She's fine. The only thing I'm, I'm, I would like her to get involved. Like I, I want her to get into is high school. But yeah, you know yeah, that yeah. even that could be blended. Cause to be honest with you, these motherfuckers in high school these days, trashy fucking, kids ain't shit, man. Kids ain't no, they're not. They're kids trashy ain't shit. as fuck, bro. Yeah. They're trashy. They're trashy as fuck. Uh, but she's so only going to high school soon, though. Yeah, uh, so. man. This is, yeah, the senior. This is her senior year in junior high. So we, we look. That's crazy. Speaking of um transitioning and fucking trashy as fuck, are you gonna take the vaccine? Uh, not in the beginning. I want to. I want to wait to see the side effects about my age. I want to see like what other people go through. I'm. I'm. I'm all for a vaccine. Like if like if if it allows me to go outside and you know if it allows all of us to be a little safer while being outside, like. Yeah, I'll take it, but I want to know what it does first. I don't. I'm not gonna sort of take a random fucking vaccine and go, yay! It's like, uh, it's like you're when you're stranded on a fucking island with no water, and someone throws you a bottle of water, and you automatically drink it. It's like, no, 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 no. So you could have poisoned this, okay? So fucking. Give me. I'm gonna, I, fucking, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna I'm gonna definitely gonna take it if it's if 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 there's a positive result from like res, from like other people and it, it looks like it's safe. Like we're gonna grow I'm a gonna, fucking arm out of your back and shit. <laughs> take this. Yeah, this, I'm gonna this, turn to this sloth first round. Fucking, I'm gonna turn to sloth from the Goonies. Like, says no, the man. Says, says the man who just bought who bought the first round of PS5s and shit. <laughs> Even well, when, <laughs> that's, that's a console, not my health. I don't know. That shit could have blew up in your die. house. I can't, I can't die from the PlayStation. You don't know. That shit could have blew up in your house. You don't know what the fuck that could have happened. That shit could have well, had a... That's worth the risk. This shit is more on a serious <laughs> you know, this might, this might actually make me grow a third eye. Like, I, don't exactly. what, I don't know what the deal is. So, uh, I, like I said, I think, I think like... Which, by the way, New York's only getting 150,000. That's less than 2% um, of the fucking state population. Well, 150,000 is basically, you know, they're trying to push it out for frontline workers and the um, the elderly, so. There you uh, go. You guys, get the, you, you, you guys go ahead. What, I, I, which, to be honest with you, I don't think the elderly should be getting it first because what if that shit's a what, what if they get fucked yeah, by that? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. That's just going to make anything, them. They're going to turn them into babies. They're gonna I don't want to sound <laughs> selfish, but, like, imagine they, like, they, they lose their, <laughs> they turn four again. Yeah, exactly. They're going to fuck. Man, man, man. It's like, what the oh, they'll, be, they'll be Benjamin Buttons. They're actually 80, but then they, they progressively get younger and shit. When they right. fuck out of the hey, year. In all honesty, hearing that just kind of scared me. Why are you going to give it to the elderly first? What if there's side effects that fucking end up putting them in the ringer? Like, uh, I, I'd rather tr test them with people my age. Like, And it's not me being selfish like I want it first. I'm saying I would rather take it first than, my gra than, than someone's grandmother. Right. 
and it not go well for them. I'd rather be the testing guinea pig than the elderly, 100%. I'm yeah. at that age where I think I should anyway. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'm not taking that. Nah, I'm not taking that shit. I'm a frontline worker, and I'm not taking that shit. And you can't fucking mandate, you can't mandate me to take that shit. You either. can't force me. I ain't taking that shit. Fuck that. I, there's certain things that I'm like, yeah, uh, no. I wasn't taking flu shots anyway, so I'm not taking. I'm not gonna take that shit. Yeah, what if the? you don't take flu shots, I don't yeah, know. I all can take that take shit. Y'all can all do that. I, I, took a flu, I, took, I got my flu shot. Well, the only reason why I got my flu shot this year was because last year was the only year I didn't get my flu shot because my ex-girlfriend told me to not get one, and it doesn't make a difference. And now and you have AIDS. And, no. and I, got the, I literally got the flu. <laughs> because, I, got, I got the flu a month later after saying that. So Because you didn't but, have the flu shot, now you have AIDS. I'm sorry. That's it. I had that before that. Oh, okay, good. But, um, <laughs> we, um, I, I, we, we, before we continue and uh, go off, I want to say... Thank you, everybody, for being a part of Termical Tabloid for the past 200 episodes. We have reached a milestone, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. A big 2-0. Can you believe it? We got here faster than we usually because usually it was a weekly show, but we changed it up to a bi-weekly show. And I must tell you, it's become progressively better being yeah, a bi-weekly show. A bi-weekly. Yeah, it's been progressively better. The content has been more... Uh, in depth when it comes to being able to give us a little bit more room to explain, get more par- uh, more participation with the listeners and uh, people who are part of the show. And we're also able to have to not feel as though we're being rushed. It gives us some type of, uh, of, of leg room to deal with. And also, you guys have been great in responding to the listenership and the downloads and the streams and such. Numbers have gone up yep. about 30 to 35% per show. So, and it's easier. It's easier for the listeners. Like, it's easier for you guys. You guys have two. Now it's two separate files instead of one ginormous four-hour listening um, vibe. Man. I would tell I you, I would. I would, would I, you, you, you could prioritize what you want. You don't have to go in the middle and fucking go. You guys could prioritize what you want to listen to. I was, I was skeptical because I was like, who the fuck would want to listen to us twice a week? And then all of a sudden, I, when I started seeing the, the analytics, when you got the first week or so, and I was like, oh. Walk. It's not that high. Then all of a sudden, day by day, you just started seeing the numbers jumping up, jumping up, jumping up. I was like, "Oh shit, they do want to listen!" Wow. I prefer it by the week. hell is I'll, wrong I'll, with these I'll people. Listener, I would. <laughs> See what the hell is wrong with these people? Thank right. you for it. Like I said, thank you for all the guys, not only in the United States but across the across the globe. Uh, our people in France who are actually the numbers are growing up there. Belgium, um, the Russian Federation. I don't know how the fuck we're getting over there. Uh, I, I guess they say they're like they they got people over there like fuck Trump. Yeah, I guess I guess they're they're not they fans of him. shit about Trump. We yeah. hate Trump uh, too. We're not a big fan of the Trump. We not we don't like the Trump. And uh, get uh, um, Spain, England, all you guys. Thank you for partaking in Turbo Tabloid. And, uh, continue, continue, share, share, like, and let everybody know about it as well. Two hundred episodes. It's in is in the bag. And f- from here on out, my friendly and loyal. Comrade in arms in this podcasting war. Congratulations to you as well, sir. To me? Yes, you. You, bro, congratulations you, to you, you bro, rode listen, the 200 episodes out, bro. You did it. Yo, listen, um, did you ever think I would be here this long? No, I actually, I actually thought you would have tapped out after episode 10. Really? <laughs> no, no. What else I you got to do? I mean, you don't have other shit. What other shit you got to do? You ain't got, other, you ain't got nothing else to do. What else are you doing? Um, yeah, you're right. You know my, you know my lifestyle. No, oh, don't worry. What, what, what's in the background of my screen? NBA 2K. Exactly. So, um, so, so nah, but like I love doing this every week. I look forward to it. Uh, I love talking wrestling. Me and Red, some me and Red sometimes call each other during the program and go, "Yo, when, when we record, I'm going off on this fucking segment." Oh yeah, but, please. Uh, it's uh, it's it's an escape that I'm I'm proud to say that I love doing. Uh, I love doing it with you, brother. And uh, 200. We never thought we would get here because it, it would take forever. Took a quick skip jump with the bi-weekly, but I'm happy to say that we are here and uh, the road to 300 is on. No, the the, the road to 300 and uh, the road to four years of doing this yeah, shit is, is coming up really? soon. Four I, I, fucking getting, years. Um, which which I, I get flashbacks of um, recording in Menahan and the other studio. The one, the one small th- fucking mixer and fucking... Yep. Uh, too loud. Oh God, yep, please! Yep, it's... Absolutely. So uh, it's been a wild ride, and uh, I do want to give a quick shot before we go to the next segment to Larry Legend, uh, who shouted us out on uh, on his Facebook page this past week for hitting his 18 years in the wrestling business. And one of the po- one of the posts he one of the pictures he posted was our low our um, graphic uh, from him on the uh, his, uh, him on the episode. 
Oh, awesome. Great. And, and, he, and, he, and he thanked Turnbuckle Tabloid privately, and he, and he messaged me and said that um, you and your partner, are, uh, I'm so happy you guys reached out to me, and it was a great conversation, that he appreciated us. So during that 200-episode run, there are guys who thank us on the way, and I just wanted to say thank you to, to Larry Legend, and congratulations on the 18 years. Yeah, dude, wow, 18 years. Shit, listen, if only if only, if only we could get that that same kind of li- uh, 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 lineage under our belts, but... Let's get the money with it as well. Let's get the money. Uh, exactly. But also, uh, shout out, like I said, to the listeners uh, who who shared their Spotify's, uh, their listing this week and had Turnbuckle Tabloid as their favorite uh, podcast on, yep. on their Spotify's. Thank my you, boy, guys. My boy, my boy, Exile Collects. Like, I, got, I got a few people from my Funko Hub community reaching out and saying, yo, I listen to both shows. And yeah. I just want to, because uh, uh, my boy Exile, um, Xavier, he messaged me, and he just got back into wrestling. So now he just, he listens to the Funko Hub, and he listens to the Turnbull Tabloid. Awesome. He, and he's like, yo, you're right. That Jericho and MJF segment sucked dick. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> which, by the way, you saw, which, if that's a wrestling rundown, you saw that fucking New York Times gave that segment the performance of the year. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're reaching, they're doing that for shock value. But we'll we'll get to that. But also, uh, for for the listeners, like, good at good dad Angel, J, uh, J.V. Lewis from St. Louis, little bit. For all you guys who shared your Turnbull Tabloid, uh, Spotify podcast numero uno uh, top rankings. Thank you guys for, for partaking and listening and being a part of the show. And it's always good to hear when you're speaking to somebody and they may comment or, or, or quote something from the show. And it goes to go. It, 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 just, it, it just resonates and, and, and it speaks volumes for, for, for us here at the show. For, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, 200 down, 200 more to go. So thank you guys Absolutely. for being a part of it. And finally, before we roll into the rest of the show, you, you know, I can't walk out of here without making a political statement. Oh, yes, God. my friends, you people of this country, as much as I said, thank you for not being so stupid and uh, not electing uh, this man back in office. Once again, you've proven your stupidity. You fucking num- nim- your numb nuts, you nimrods, you fucking buffoons. How can you give this man 200 plus million dollars? I, while he's scamming you and telling you that this fucking election is a fraud and it's not, it's that. over, Johnny. Ah. Oh, you guys. You know, AW fans were sheep. Oh, this is just. Say about the Republicans. This is, and it's not even Republicans. I'm listen. I'm. I believe there's a difference between Republicans and Trump supporters. Of I'm course saying. there is. Listen, on episode two hundred two, we have Hank's happy hour. Hank Flanagan stops in. We discuss uh, a year in review. We discuss in 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 his um. His, his his mind frame and his mindset because he is a conservative and he's a Republican. We do have a conversation about it. But I do dif- differentiate the difference of Trump supporters and Republicans. And as you can see now, a lot of these Republicans now in office, they're starting to slowly but surely pull back away from this fucking maniac. Listen, a lot of shit is happening now. DACA is now being back open for the, you know documented uh, uh, immigrants to begin rolling back in it again. Uh, the legalization now, the decriminalization of marijuana is is a, is, is passed. Slowly but surely, the, the middle finger is coming up in, in our government to say "fuck you, get out." But you know, two hundred million dollars to this fucking con man, this grifter. You guys are out of your fucking mind. You have a fucking his lawyer is in a Michigan fucking hearing about fraud, and he's farting. <laughs> it's- yep. This is you can't make Giuliani's this. melting. He's farting. I don't know what's next. Giuliani like, what? was he's heard farting on the mic. It's like what the fuck? Then you have this coop that's next to him claiming a voter fraud, and you can't you can't take these people serious. It's like a tell, it's like a Saturday Night Live skit. I tell, I tell my coworkers, you know, everyone's <laughs> upset that Ring, everyone's upset that Ringling Barnum Bailey Circus is closed. We're truly not. Uh, if you want to watch a nice circus act, I suggest you watch uh, these 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 this bullshit going on. Oh my God! Giuliani with the lions, Trump with the fucking on the on the on the tilt the world bullshit, the motorcycle. Like, oh, it's fucking crazy! I tell you, I sit here and I go, this can't be real. This is what has become our society. I said you might as well listen. We our, our country our country has gone to shit because we at one point had people believing in this man. Our numbers from COVID deaths are happening every day. They look like fucking nine eleven numbers. Yo, and, EC Negro, EC Negro still believes he's gonna he's gonna win. He posted this this morning, four more years, four more years. No, he's he's gotta be trolling. Okay, he's no, got, he's not. He's no, gotta, he said wait. He said he said wait until the Supreme Court is ruled. No, they're years. not. His own man, the fucking bar said there's nothing going on. There's nothing. There's nothing. 
It's 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 deplorable. This is ridiculous. This is crazy. They can't. They, like JD from NY says, it's deplorable. California just uh, just just um. They just cleared their electoral college. They, it's like, dude, it's over. It's it. Get over it. Start. Get the right. Can, can you believe the election was more than a month ago already? I know. This is what I'm and saying. We're, we're still, still fighting over who won. We're still bitching about this. I'm telling. You, I got people who sharing. Like, look, look at these voter machines that that actually uh, can change your vote. And it's like, dude, that's fucking. That shit was from two years ago. That's and Wally. It was, that's Wally. It was two. Is <laughs> Wally? <laughs> It's from two years ago, and that thing has been debunked. And I go, what's... I, I said, I can't with people. I can't. But it's been entertaining, though. R2, D2, and Wally. So this week, ladies and gentlemen, we have on episode 201. 201 we have this week. We have around... Uh, we have Wrestling Rundown. Wrestling Rundown, of course, is our news of the week. What, do, what, what, what teasers do you have for the news of the week this week? We have an unfortunate passing in the wrestling world this, uh, this past week, which I know me and Red are very sad about. A uh, humongous uh, passing, yeah. A big passing. Uh, we have Big E with um, a new new music by Wale. Uh, we have uh, a possible impact in AEW partnership. Uh, Melina getting pissed off about return rumors. And uh, Sting and Tessa Blanchard. Uh, yes. Also, we have Around the Square Circle. Around the Square Circle, we have our, our thoughts about Winter is Coming, as well as we, we mentioned the, the, what's coming down the line, the impact in AEW uh Combination, the the, the uh, partnership, as well take, as takeover predictions. Takeover predictions are coming up. Damn, that's already shit. Damn, what the fuck, man. This Sunday, this Sunday. And uh, well, at least it's at least it's Sunday. I I'm off, so I can watch. <laughs> are you coming over? Um, I'm about to. <laughs> oh, I'm I, about. I, I, I didn't know you were off. No, yeah, I just realized shit. I am. I'm off. Fuck. Uh, we'll have that as much more as uh, and and much more. Also, um, on episode, excuse me. Ooh. Let's pass quickly. 202, cutting a promo, will be our discussion about the hypocrisy in wrestling fans. Not wrestling, the wrestling fans. I mean, come on, guys, really? This week was just, I, 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 I couldn't I couldn't even, it, it was a visual fucking hodgepodge of, of, of disgusting rhetoric between both sides of, hey, AEW's great, WWE's great, WWE sucks, AEW sucks, go fuck yourself, fuck you! And it was like, what the fuck? Happened here. Was, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, they see they, they see a they see an old coot and they fucking like, everybody lost their shit. The, the, well, it was it? a good pop. Like I said, I'll talk about it, but like yeah, I, I mean, I, I'll get into it. But it was it, it, like I said, it wasn't bad. And uh, but it, it's just the fans that just almost like it just makes me want to turn off wrestling sometimes. Also, we have our discussion. Hank's happy hour, like I mentioned earlier. Hank Flanagan stops in, discusses a year in review. We discuss. Uh, how his name change started in the beginning of the year, then all this fucking shit happened. Wrestling dies, and then uh, Mike Tyson and uh, yeah, and Trump's out of the office. So that that's all pretty much a whole year in review. So get make nice. sure you, uh, check in for that. But uh, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We will return and uh, much more in store here on episode two hundred one of Turnbuckle Tabloid. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of Turnbuckle Tabloid. This is Wrestling Rundown. You think it's since it's 200 episodes down, you think we need new music? Maybe. For Wrestling Rundown, right? Maybe. Hmm. It depends on it depends on what it is, though. It, it, would, it would have to be a big decision, because this music's known. Yeah. So it would be like, it would have to be like, I would not take anything more than something that would be automatically look at each other and go, yeah, well, this is good. Like, it would have to be high standards. We should do a poll. Should we change the Wrestling Rundown theme music? <laughs> change the music uh, um, listen it's possible it's possible 
Yeah, because, you know, sometimes I sit here in my drunken stupors when I'm fucking putting together audio for the shows and shit, and I'm going, you think maybe we should change this? <laughs> I don't like this anymore. Okay, uh, okay, Cherry Funk. I, I don't want to do this song anymore. <laughs> so... Yeah, okay, Cherry Funk. Um, yeah, I, I, I... This week is... It's... um, I don't know. I... I I, I I started looking through a lot of the the TV, the news articles and stuff this week and I was going ah, a lot of this stuff this week wasn't really hitting like I don't know I, I, I seem like this week's news was a lot, a lot of like um, reaching it was a lot of um of uh, what you call it um hearsay kind of fucking stuff like a lot of Vince stuff this week I was like I don't really give a fuck yeah, about nah, that yeah nah nah uh, we're, we're talk- we're, we'll be talking about the, the, the confirmed official yeah. bullshit like okay. none of that none of that that's why like I'd rather have five legit good news stories than 20 shitty ones that right. like, are all rumor like I'm not gonna do that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, we're not TMZ I mean yeah hey, I don't know but as always I am the Howard Stern of this segment to my Robin Ophelia Cuevas Oski so Oski take it away all right, the first piece of news we have here this week on Turnbuckle Tabloid uh, is some some sad news to report. Uh, let's just go. Let's just get it out of the way now, so I can get some more serious later on. Um, the unfortunate passing of Pat Patterson. Uh, the world is saddened to hear that Pat Patterson has passed away. Um, he passed away this past week. At 79 years old, and the wrestling world is mourning. Uh, Patterson, um, he actually was battling a cancer. Um, he was, um, you know, he was a trailblazer in the industry. Um, Patterson was linked to many firsts in sports and entertainment throughout his storied career, um, including being the first ever intercontinental champion and the creation of the Royal Rumble match. Um, you know this is meme sad music, right? What? You know this songs for like meme sad music, right? You know this. You know this songs played when like people like bust their ass on TikTok. I don't know what you're talking about. This is a serious death here, bro. This is Pat Pat. This is my grandfather, bro. And, and you're gonna play meme sad music right now? That's crazy. Well, you know what? No, sometimes music just plays when there's just a, a really. Heart wrenching moment on Turbo Tablet. Sometimes I don't even have to hit the button, it just does it on its own. Yeah, right. It magically, it magically just pressed. It just, um, it, it, it just, just magically goes into depressed mode. Let's go through it. Um, Pat Patterson started his wrestling career in Canada in 1958 before establishing himself in the Bay Area and then moved over to the WWF to become the company's first IC champion. He, he won it at a tournament in Rio de Janeiro. Out of all places. Sounds Everybody like who wins a weird fucking title or, or title that changes hands that's not supposed to have happened, it always yeah. happens in, like, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Yeah, like the weirdest areas. Um, he was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 1996, and then he retired in 84. But how I know Pat Patterson was his career after wrestling. Uh, as an announcer, WWE executive, and um, his multiple, multiple... Um, cameos, cameos in the Royal Rumble and uh, other other events. Uh, I loved Pat Patterson on Legends House. I thought Pat Patterson was the was the best man in that house. He was funny. He was the first gay WWE superstar. He came out as gay on the show. Um, he was a joy to watch. You, you can only imagine how much of an amazing man he was in person. But Red, uh, what, what what do you, what, what do you have to say about the passing of Pat Patterson? Because this is not a small. This is not. Um, one to be overlooked. This is a this is a, this is a legend in my opinion. Well, no, this, this was this was hard hitting because even Vince was was choked up, and of course, you know, because I was one of his closest friends. One and of such. his best friends. Yeah, and you see, like, you know, what was on SmackDown? They had Gerald Briscoe up there and such. Yep, and, yep. And they, they, of course, the tandem was that that was the Stooges back in the Attitude Era. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, the uh, henchmen. Uh, <laughs> I um, I'm not sure if he was out as a gay wrestler. During his wrestling time, they were some some news nah, articles I think were saying he came that. out gay on Legends House. That's what I'm saying. I don't remember him being gay, as in like out and during his wrestling era. I, I think that it came out afterwards, but it was always alluded or it was well known that he was gay. Uh, 
had a lover for 40 some odd years who passed away in in the late 90s and um he discussed in the legends house on how distraught that made him but he was also very open armed and welcomed in the locker room regardless of his sexuality and such like that but the shit that pissed me off and this as i said i i i hate people because you know and this not only happens in wrestling this happens across the board in any parts of life as soon as this man passes away the first thing you want to bring up is the negative shit that he had gotten in his life where people had accused him of grooming men and um asking for sexual favors for enhancement in the program or in the federation and stuff like that uh being very um openly uh sexual and being very uh uh what's the word I'm looking for uh aggressive when it came to making pushes for wrestlers uh, unless they did certain things for me. and I'm like are you, are you you're, you're kidding me right this is what we're doing same shit happened when Kobe died they're already talking about wasn't he charged with rape it's like, what the fuck let yeah. the man rest shut it's the like, fuck up it's like yo the body's not even fucking cold I saw somebody who posted the other day and was like isn't he charged with but I'm like my guy let him rest not you for nothing now not for nothing but you fucking glorify rappers and fucking drug dealers and for yet being abusers and fucking and you know what i'm saying and, and you're fucking and you're and you're and you're bad and you're bashing this man in his death about something that was alleged he was never accused uh, he was never charged or of any of these uh, anything of a crime it, it, this is you know, it, it, you know what's sad that that's the first thing that he thought about when he found out Pat Patterson died. Yeah, like, oh my this God, is what I'm, I'm saying. For, I'm so sorry. I was like, oh, first thing that came to me, I texted you the second I found out. I was like, no, I was so sad. Yeah, it's one of my viejos, one of my old men, man, my one of my peoples, and you know, and that, that was that's, that's the, the first, first thing you think about. That furthest shit, thing like, full of my of, mind. And that it's ain't sad. It. That but, ain't it, bro. But you, you know, know what? This Rochester. happens. This happens in society as well, especially in news stories and whatever, and whatever because there'll be a story about. Uh, 29 year old man was killed in Brooklyn the other night because he was on his way to the store to get milk for his mother. And at the end of the article, it say, but the young man had a rap sheet of two prior arrests and doing a jail time of six months. It's like, why does that even fucking matter? It doesn't matter anymore. Unless if he was, matter. unless he was a, in a gang at that moment, and he got caught doing gang shit or doing street shit. Then I could be like, all right, maybe I can see the reason why for this. But now you judge him? But this is a fucking guy who actually got a full-time job and doing a, a double duty as, as a fucking uh, delivery guy and a, and, a, and, a, and a fucking postal worker, and you're giving him shit because he had a criminal... Pe- Man, get the fuck out of here. This should be killing me with people. But other than that, uh, Pat Patterson, well-known in the back of the locker rooms with many, many of the superstars, male and women, who appreciated his insight, his thoughts about... Uh, their career, how to better themselves, how to build matches, and also the man was known to be a very funny fucking guy. He's one of those guys that you could always get a smile from him, get a smile out of him, and he'll very much help to ease your any any tensions, any qualms that you had going on about your career, your gimmick, your matches, and all. Pat Day was always been told that Pat was always an ear for. For you to talk to And was able to Share an experience It was great Because they did the montage And you saw a picture of him And guys like Me, Gene And Dusty And all these Fallen heroes And such like that And it was It was a beautiful Beautiful dedication And tribute to the man But also I have to say that Yes he was my He was one of my old My old guys I used to love When Pat went on TV because whenever you would see Pat on TV and any role, you knew that some kind of goofy niche was gonna happen. But uh, right, I love uh, I love uh, I love Pat, man. Uh, from Legends House to his shenanigans, he was just a, a gem to watch, and uh, it's sad, man. And, and to this day, and to this day, we 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 use his catchphrase when things is crazy. We say it's banana. It's banana. It is banana. It's so, banana. So our condolences to uh, Pat Patterson and his family. And the WWE and the wrestling universe, because it wasn't just WWE, it's just wrestling in a whole, man. Everybody lost a, a legend in the sport of wrestling. Next up. Next piece of news we have is CM Punk. Some CM Punk news as he went on Twitter this week to say 
Everyone in the WWE and NXT locker room should be embarrassed to the fact that Pat McAfee has a better promo than anyone in the locker room and that he didn't even have to try saying on Twitter that Pat McAfee is a better promo than anyone on the show and that should everyone should feel embarrassment for that fact. Uh, basically saying that they did the wrestlers went through training, went to promo school and they're still not even close to the to the great promo of Pat McAfee. Does he have a point there? Should the, should the locker room be picking up the picking up the pace here, or should they should they be just proud of the guy, or should they be taking it like CM Punk is like, wow, I'm kind of embarrassed. This dude just walked in my fucking sport and took over the promo game. Well, I'm I'm actually more impressed with the fact that he's watching NXT. Of course he is. CM yeah. Punk's watching. Please. He said he, he said he he watches it while he's on the treadmill and shit. Like he's doing stuff, but he also in that same light he also gave a compliment, a big shout out to um to Rhea Ripley. He says that's that's the biggest star on their. Uh, on their platform right now, so as hey, listen, he's paying attention. But yes, he is correct, of course. It's fucking guys, but I don't. You know what it is though? It's not their fault, and in, in, in some ways, because they want them to hit bullet points. And to be honest, McCaffrey's like, listen, I, I you know, it has a tails. You, you either use me or you don't. And if you use me, at least use me to my strengths, and which is talking. I'm gonna be honest with you. If I came into to, to wrestling. And I've been told by different, you know, wrestlers in the business that if I were to go into the business and be a manager, this would, it would be like a duck to water because you know they they feel like I could cut a promo and I I know how to speak well and speak eloquently and I pro, I got to do this right. But my thing is, not everybody's built to do that. There's it, it's everyone a, has their own niche. They, yeah, it's a gift. To, to be able to do that I, I've been able to speak In front of people Since I was a kid Since I was five years old I could I grab the mic And I would, I would talk to it's a, a crowd It's a gift Like people Some people don't have that This I've always talked about There's two things That you do in the world uh, that, that people are afraid To do in the world One is dying And one and the other Is speaking in front Of a group of people And that's and that's Those are the two Biggest fears yep. So You know to, to, to be able to talk Is It is a gift But also when you When you when you learn and you're able to know how to put together thoughts and put together a sentence and and, and bridge your 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 tail your 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 angle your the reason why you're making these proclamations when you're able to do that well then you should be giving the car blanche to be given the microphone and do what it is that you do and a lot of guys in wrestling really don't do that because they're not really groomed to do that. So I, I, I mean, come on, we, 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 we've done, you know, cutting a promos about it and we might have to do it again uh, on the current event and the current status of, of guys and promos these, these days, this guy's fucking, who could talk you into a building and then there's motherfuckers that'll talk you out of a fucking building. I mean, it's rare. So when you get a guy like right. Pat McCaffrey, he's punk is right. This Punk would know he's he's one dude who's who, who was fucking magical on the mic. So yeah, he he could spot a fucking a fellow uh, um, a thespian if you want to say it that way. So right. yeah, Absolutely. no, definitely. But yeah, it's, Punk is watching the program. We, we I, it's yeah, it's not it's not it's not um it's not missed. We 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 see you, Punk. We see you. Oh, I, I was gonna hit Rondo's beat. <laughs> Rondo hit it. Yeah, right. uh, we have some breaking news. Oh shit! Let's find the um. Let's find the drop. Oh, here we go. We have some breaking news. Here we go. Wait, it's coming. All right, here we go. We gotta report this. Breaking, breaking news. news. Cody Hall, the son of Sky Hall, has signed with MLW, and has instantly been fired. <laughs> Wait, what? Cody Hall, the son of... I saw Scott that he was Hall, hired, but he got instantly fired? Signed, uh, has signed a contract with MLW, and in the same day, MLW announces that the two sides agreed to part ways. <laughs> what people the, were, people what were, the fuck happened? Pe people were originally saying that they wanted him to join Contra, maybe um, Brian Pillman Jr., but some reason, don't know why, uh, Scott Hall instantly is not no longer under MLW. Do you consider this man a failure? Uh, um, 
because people are saying that he, sh if he had his chance, it would have been years ago. The only, the only thing, anything about Scott Hall. But he, son, had, he had Cody. a he, Cody had a run in um in New Japan for a little bit. He was in a, he was in the 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 stable. He was in Bullet Club for a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Uh. As for his wrestling, I got to say that I maybe seen, I think I've maybe seen him maybe once or twice wrestle, and I wasn't really that impressed. Um, He's obviously missing something. Um, I guess, but um, I don't know. This is, this is I, I guess this is one of those things where just because your, your, your legacy, because of your, who your father is, really doesn't go over well i guess i don't know what the fuck that i've never heard that's of that bad before. that's bad i never that's heard bad. of that like, before. How do, like how do you do that i don't know welcome to the kevin owens show after AEW's partnership with impact was announced nxt leader triple h had a conference call and said that wwe is officially open for business regarding partnerships with rival promotions saying if it helps us in the long run, and no, not three months from now, we mean 10 years from now, we'll talk business. But until then, the door is always open. What do you think about that comment from Triple H, the man himself? That is clear desperation on my side. I think that is just him, them going, oh, they didn't know we were open for business. Uh, well, now AEW, uh, we can't sound like dickheads. Uh, all right, we're over, whatever, fuck it. What do you think about the, about, about the, the fact that Triple H had to say that about um, NXT? It wasn't about... Um, no, he said WWE in general was open for business, not just NXT. WWE is, and he said Vince is very open for suggestions. Yeah, he's open for, for suggestions. Doesn't mean he's gonna fucking use them. He's not gonna take them. I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, come on. He, he should have tagged it. We're open for business when Vince is, isn't here. <laughs> That's what he should have put it at. Once Vince fucking leaves, he needs to. Fu you know what's and 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 it made me think about in the passing of Pat Patterson. Vince needs to start fucking recognizing that you know, as as morbid as it may sound, that 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 door is closing when it comes to life expense, uh, expectancy, sir. Uh, you're 75, 70, 76 years old. You're getting up in age. You can't move the way that you usually move before. You actually look like one of the animatronics in fucking Disney World. I and mean, you go to like, I'm done. You go to what is it, Wonder World or whatever fuck it is that's over there. I've never been to Disney World, so I wouldn't know. Um, but you, but with the Hall of Presidents or some shit like that, you're looking like put a fucking uh, 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 a top hat on him. He look like fucking Lincoln or some shit. <laughs> it, it, you're looking bad, bro. And maybe you should be taking this time to not work. Go home. Get some sleep. Spend time with your grandkids. You know, it's it's time maybe we need to start doing transitional. Think think about your friend, your your boy in office, Big Orange. Time for him to start getting transitional. Getting ready to, you know, get the U-Haul. Stop packing your shit and getting the fuck out the White House. Vince, you might need to start moving that big-ass dinosaur head in the office and start moving that shit out and let some people come in and start doing... Because that, that shit ain't going to happen if Vince is around. But I do pose this question to you. What company should work with WWE? If you see a partnership with AEW and Impact, which is fucking weird. Uh, that, that, that's kind of weird to me. But um, what company do you think should open the doors with? Well, excuse me. What doors should WWE open? Uh, what company should WWE open their doors to? Um, Ring of Honor. I was going to say this. Ring, Ring of Honor needs it badly. I think Ring of Honor would needs a surge, and it, and I think Ring of Honor has some talent, some old talent that deserve a WWE chance, like Jay Lethal, like Jay Briscoe, uh, those kind of guys who are stuck in those contracts. It gives them a chance to get a bigger spotlight at the end of their career, uh, while WWE helping them get a little more viewership and some clout that they definitely desperately need. I wouldn't like, say I wouldn't say I wouldn't say stuck in their contracts. I would say they've been loyal to Ring of Honor for the longest time, but. I think they do need that stage to perform. But that, like imagine imagine Tyler Breeze and um what the fuck's his name? Uh Dalton Castle? And Dalton Castle having a tag team quick run. Like it, it there's I think it would benefit both parties, but mainly Ring of Honor, uh for sure. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of that. That um uh let's open a door to New Japan. I, I would like to see that happen. I would love. Well. I would love an MLW partnership on on a smaller note because I just want Jacob Two in WWE. <laughs> well, MLW is actually MLW might be a more feasible one because seeing as though that um, 
uh, um, Court Bowers, a former WWE employee, so they might still have a good relationship there. And uh, and Jim Ross used to work with them as well. So, and that yeah. might be. But um, yeah, that's not that's not gonna fucking happen with Vince around. Are you fucking kidding me? Why would we bring him? This is the same fucking old coot who didn't want to do Undertaker versus Sting, which would have sold out fucking any fucking venue in in in. I hope and across I, I think, the board. I think, I think I think Vince regrets that that match would have sold out merchandise. I don't see it. I don't, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. I don't know why. I don't. I don't get. I don't get the one match that I was told in my ear in the nineties every day at work. <laughs> I don't. I don't get what the, the 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 one match that every person in Twitter fucking told me to fucking book. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. But, but uh, no, yeah, I, I think I, I guess I tri- tri- trips. I'm like, yeah, it's cool that you said it, but I don't see that shit happening. You ain't nah. even half a dog. You just a little piece of shit suit. That's what amazing. The fuck was that? Oh, sorry. It was it was um it was an ad for one of the pieces of news I have. I thought it was porn. I was like, the fuck? <laughs> eh, it could have been. Oh. Um <laughs> I mean it depends on what you want. Um more news we have here as um let me ask you a quick question, Red. What are you what are your thoughts on Tessa Blanchard? Uh talented woman, but she's also a big fuck up and might be a liability to anybody who fucking takes her. Well, let me uh, let me tell you this. Uh, as uh, it has been announced that um, Tessa Blanchard, of course, is still in the free agent market, but AEW doesn't seem interested. Uh, Tessa Blanchard is not being pursued by AEW, and that comes straight from the source. Um, of her, on his of a father. <laughs> of yeah, father. Of, of her pops. Um, so, yeah, ba- basically the article uh, say, states that um, – um, Blanchard um, has not been – AEW is not going to be her destination. Uh, Meltzer noted that based on what he was told, when her name came up, those in AEW wouldn't deny her talent but said the decision was made to not pursue her. Uh, Blanchard still has promotions like WWE to go to, and I think she will end up in WWE. I'll be honest with you. I think we see her at TakeOver this Sunday um, in some shape or form. But what do you think about AEW passing on Tessa Blanchard when they need a women's division that desperately? I'll give my opinion first. I think that I think the Impact Partnership just gave them a, a solid knockouts division. I think I think that I think if they're really doing this partnership with the Impact right, I think the trade would clearly be AEW gives Impact um, they they get they get to use their tag division and um, AEW's got to get that knockouts division because yow. Uh, what do you think about Tessa Blanchard and? Uh, AEW's pass on that. Yeah, I think I think Tessa is most likely going to be WWE bound um, NXT because they're a little bit more lenient when it comes to people and their fucking foolishness. Well, someone man. someone said WWE is the place where they pass over everyone's behavior in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like they they're very very, they're very um. Do you draw money. Yeah, very liberal when it that's comes the question, to question. Do you draw money? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 she said what? That she'll take a shit on somebody's chest? What? Really? What? Can she draw? It's like it's, they doesn't give a fuck. Can she can't. draw? But um, and plus, if you know, to be honest, you can't. You're not gonna be able to leave Rhea there for the long in NXT for a long time. So you're gonna need somebody to slide right in. She, she's not gonna want to work that long schedule either. That WWE. Well, WWE doesn't have a long schedule anymore. Yeah, but AEW is once a week. Yeah, but I'm saying I, I just thought about it. WWE doesn't. But you know, AEW right will now. look. WWE will look. I mean, um, AEW will look like a hypocrite for um. For for signing her because all her racial shit that she mentioned before, but then you told fucking um Hulk Hogan that the doors aren't open to your pal. It's like nobody gives a fuck about you. Who cares? Right. Motherfucker sitting on millions. You think you fuck to go see you, please? And by the way, you would sign WWE. Or you would sign Hulk Hogan if you wanted to. Let's let's be yep, for real. That's fact. If that's the period. if if you knew that was gonna fucking draw, yeah, you would. But um yeah, I think she's more NXT WWE bound. I would be surprised if she pops back up in Impact. If Impact takes her back. Wow, what fucking maroons. Yikes. And you know what happens when you call yourself the best in the world? Everybody back there, including me, is thinking Shane McMahon can kiss my ass. <laughs> Quick side funny story here is AW was um, asked about the marijuana segment with Conan that happened during their Las Vegas segment. AW saying that wasn't weed, that, that wasn't them smoking. And Conan went on to say, shit. If we're opening up a limo and smoke is coming out, what do you think we're doing? Roasting marshmallows? Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, we're some fucking penny in there. 
Yeah, the panis, the, the, no, no, the roasted pork shoulder. The roasted pork shoulder. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're smoking um, a ham in there. The fuck? Yeah, terrible. Um, no, but this is the this is the real news. Um, Jimmy Rave. Jimmy Rave announces retirement after having his arm amputated. I know you know Jimmy Rave, right? Yeah, he was in um he was in Impact for a little bit. What do you think about the uh, the unfortunate news of that? Of That's Jimmy terrible. Rave? That's a sad story. Do you, you ever think he had a chance to make it big? No. No. He no. and then he had put on a lot of weight after a while too. Uh, so yeah, uh, unfortunate there. He was uh, a good. He was. A, he was. A, he was. He was a, a mid card uh, cruiserweight at one time, but um, nah, he I, I, I didn't really. But he, you know, he was he was solid. He was a good wrestler. And um, before I go to the last piece of news, Red, anything on your end? Uh, like I said, it wasn't a big week, so I don't expect you to have much. Uh, do you have the performance the performance center signings? Yes, I was waiting for that. That was the last news I Okay, good. Had. Then now. Well, well, you know what? Um, then we could do this quick one. Alberto Del Rio may be off the hook in sexual assault case. Uh, let's, do an up, let's do an update. Um, do the update, Dins. This past week, the the um, um, back in May, the police say that out said that Alberto Del Rio tied her hands with boxing straps and then stuffed a sock in her mouth so she could he could sexually assault her for several hours. Blah blah blah. blah. But recently. Uh, recently, she apologized to the to the Alberto Del Rio family for the damages caused by my errors. She announced that she was lying. I think it's hush money, but she says she's lying and that um, the cases might be just dropped. What do you think about the update on Del Rio after last week we said he should be in prison for um, life? <laughs> that's right, yo, you son, you mentioned hush money. It's like that's not far fetched because they do come from money. Uh, he, you know, his family is you know has some kind of uh, of wealth. And um, be like, listen, bitch, if you don't fucking shut the fuck up and take this money, we might fucking off you. Mm. Yeah, well, you don't know who uh, you don't know who we know. But the other thing is just like on the on the flip side, it goes once again. Every everything is an allegation. Everything is just you know you're, you're, you're innocent until proven until proven guilty. But I still think yep. he's a douchebag. I mean, he's a he's a dick. I still um, think he's a dick. So, but. Yeah, we'll see the update on Del Rio when the time comes. And the final piece of news we have, the Wait main event. I got more. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, AEW doing a Christmas story. Seems as though on Twitter there has been on, on the AEW on TNT page a uh, casting call for AEW to do a table reading of the movie A Christmas Story. What? Oh, okay. Next. So. <laughs> Fuck yo. AW is so it's just, it's just clowns. I guess it's just going to be one of those things. I don't know if they do it for the website or for YouTube, but they're going Better to. be for charity or some shit. Probably. They already have uh, Cody and um, and Brandy playing the parents of Ralphie in A Christmas Story. Are you, like, not impressed with this? I'm, no. no just... It's just. I want them to put either. Um, Marco Stunt or Jungle Boy as Ralphie. <laughs> that's all, that's yeah, all I give like, a fuck about. And I've never she, seen a Christmas story, so I don't even know the characters. Re- Matt, no. I've never seen a Christmas story, nah. Matt, with the, with no. The, with the gun and the bunny onesie, I've never seen it. Bro. Matt, you, that is your homework for this year. You are watching a Christmas story. Okay, we'll watch it together. Yes, we will. We'll hold hands we'll, while we do it we'll, as well. I'll kiss you on the, on the cheek when you tell me uh, everything's all right. Once once, once um, Dad gets the, the, the leg lamp, that's when you, you'll kiss me on the cheek. God, uh, no, bro, I'm not gonna lie though. We do need to see that. Hundreds, I've, never seen it. I've seen it hundreds of times. I fucking love them. It's, I heard one, it's a classic. One of my one of my favorite Christmas movies. Um, yeah, that's not that for some reason. I don't know why. Leon Ruff and referee Aja Smith is engaged. Congratulations to the duo. The belt and the woman. Look Good at that. You. Look at you, sir, doing big things over there. Uh, an unfortunate, another unfortunate passing. Uh, um. Uh, Former WWE diva Ashley Masario's brother was killed this past week in New York City. Uh, yeah, the, we can't catch a break, huh? Yeah, the young man was recently released from rehabilitation because he himself was suffering from his own demons. Uh, seems as though he had an an alcohol problem, and due in part to the fact of her suicide. And um, the man wasn't even out of the rehab for twelve hours. And, oh uh, man! Was stabbed that's... in the New York City street outside of a pizzeria. So the condolences to the Masaro family for that as that's well. That's terrible. And um, finally, Vince offered China the WWE title not to pose for Playboy. This was told by 
her manager at the time on a wrestling podcast that Vince was so against her not posing for Playboy and getting breast implants that he offered her the WWE title. This was during, I believe, the 98-99 time. So should I be threatening my, my boss with posing for Playboy to get promoted? And getting big tits. Getting big, yeah, fake like, tits. I guess. Like, I'm the... calling bullshit. First That's of all, bullshit. what are you talking about? Sable and all these women who did Playboy, their fucking magazines were bestsellers. Uh, Sable's magazine was like second to fucking Marilyn Monroe or some shit like that. So uh, why would Vince refuse that? Secondly, for her to get fucking big tits, uh, really? Yikes. Yeah. If there's one thing that Vince will want is big tits. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's true. And lastly, when the fuck would she get the WWE title during that time? Let's be honest. During she that time, it, she loses it the same night. I mean, honestly, you had Stone Cold, Undertaker, The Rock, Mankind, Triple H. All in that same cycle. When the fuck yeah. would they find a way to squeeze her in to get the fucking... Uh... Yeah, I'm calling bullshit on that story, bro. But this is the same guy that prevented the uh, dark side of the ring on China because he is in the works of doing his own documentary san san um, uh, sans biopic as well. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I think this guy's fucking a charlatan. He's full of shit. There's a lot of things that he's easy. Yep. And also, right to me. also, there is I, I, I caught a a little a little um slip up by Cornette this week on his show where there Ooh. may be a Dark Side of the Ring episode on The Ultimate Warrior. And I'd be happy about that. Yes, so. sir. That guy's a fucking creep. That guy Ooh, needs Ultimate Warrior. Hell yeah, he's a fucking oh, creep. Have you not seen his workout videos on YouTube? Oh, he's fucking misogynistic, fucking racist, fucking rants and shit like that. God, that guy's a fucking turd bag. He, That's a no no for me. Bro. Yeah, yeah. So we might see a dark side of the ring from that as well. But other than that, I'm done on my end. And the final piece of news we have is that the WWE has recruited. Um, some independent wrestling standouts. Uh, new, the newest group uh, for the Performance Center includes a very strong class, in my opinion. We have Desmond Xavier and Alex. Uh, sorry, Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz from the Rascals. Uh, Impacts the Rascals are officially in the Performance Center. No, where's the third member at? Uh, I was looking for the same dude. I think he's probably still in Impact. Maybe I think. I guess so. they said we want you two, not you. Yeah, um, maybe. On, Weird. We have Sahiru Higuchi, um, Eichmann Higuchi. Uh, we have Unreal Howard, which is actually a former WNBA player, and she has a wingspan of God know what. She's fucking built. She, people are saying she might be the standout of the class. Really? <laughs> Should be the they're Bianca, saying, she's the Bianca Belair of them? Yo, yeah. They're, they're, they have high hopes for her. Uh, Russ Taylor and our boy, um, someone I, I've talked to privately. He's a great guy. Congratulations to Alex Zane. Um, I love that guy, man. He's a great talent. Uh, Alex Zane is also signed. He looks WWE. bigger. He looks weird. I say he looks bigger. Yeah, no, he he's been building up. He's yeah, been, uh, he looks bigger. Between you and me, he's known about this for months. So he's been in the he's been training uh, yeah. for this. So yeah, that's uh, a good. Congratulations to that class. That's a strong class, man. And I like the Desmond and um and Zachary signing because they I need tag teams. But in in that and I have a feeling if they do it right, they might make them their Motor City machine guns if they do it yeah, properly. It could work. It could work. Yeah. So well, um, Higuchi looks like fucking Nakazawa. That's uh, I don't know. He looks like a Joe. I don't know. He just looks like a clown. I mean, um, who's this guy? Uh. Russ Taylor looks not that bad, uh -huh. and uh, but like I said, Alex, Alex Zane is my dude, so I, I'm repping him the most. That's my guy, so I'm happy to. See, I'm really happy to see him get signed. Yeah, I fucking uh, I, I I tried to get him right before. I tried to fucking get him right before they was gonna gonna do the announcement and shit, and I just fucking I said, damn it, and I reached out to him and everything. I said, fuck. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, uh, congratulations to that class. That one is actually um, um, promising. And, yeah, I'm really um, excited for Alex Zane and the and the Rascals and and even the woman uh, Howard. She looks very impressive. Yeah, what the hell's gonna happen to Trey Miguel? That's um. Yeah, that's. I guess we'll find that one out. 
Uh, most likely, you know what? He probably want to. You know what? He's probably one of those guys that'll go either to MLW or. He might just stay in Impact. Maybe. He was maybe. Doing single for a little while in Impact, so. Yeah, so it says that he's he's out of Impact because the Rascals will be leaving, but um, who knows? Let's see. Um, let's see what happens to him on that uh, on, we'll uh, for the future. So, guys, when we come back, we're gonna have around the square circle. Uh, much much to talk about. We have War Games predictions as well as. I'll talk about winter is coming and how the buildup for war games occur. And um, I kind of like the I, I kind of like the buildup that's going on with SmackDown with uh, Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts about that as well. So, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Check you guys in a second. Oh, it's brat, LAX, whatever it is, homicide. You listen to Turnbuckle Tabloid. What is it? Turnbuckle what? Turnbuckle Tabloid. Tabloid, okay. Right. Let me know when you're ready. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. But that, Notorious 187, OG, the LX, 5150, the land, Frank White. You listen to Turn, Turnbuckle Tabloid. One more time. Let's get it. Yes. Yo, yo, yo. But that, Notorious 187 is here. LX, OG, 5150, the land, Frank White. And you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Turnbuckle Tabloid is back with Jay Santee and Mr. Young, White, and Privileged. It brings me joy to see Ben bobbing his head to the music. <laughs> I like that cheesy porn music that was on before that one, just. <laughs> He's just like vibing. Him. Hey, young, fat, and portly. Welcome back, sir. You're looking very swell. You look good. Me? Yeah, it looks like COVID. Yeah. looks like COVID does a wonder for people. Yeah, I've lost a bit, a tiny, tiny bit of weight, and I can now see my penis again, so all's good. Oh, it went from your stomach to your ass? No, it's just, I wish, wow. That's big enough if it is. <laughs> was it, the was joy, it, was, the joy is gone. Was it really that bad, man? Was it bad? It was fucking dreadful. Three weeks, I was off my feet for, man. It was horrible. That's crazy, bro. I'm happy better, man. I went six days without eating. That's how I know that I am ill. Six wow. days Man, without eating? Not eating for six days? Six, six days. Anyone, any food. human, any human eating, not eating for six days is fucking concerning. But as like, you can tell, it didn't affect them not one bit. <laughs> it didn't affect them at all. <laughs> well, are you back to eating now, Ben? Oh, most definitely. There you go. Good. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, I'm man. Like I said, hear I've that. heard, I've heard, I've heard horror stories numerous, numerous times, man. But like I said, it could have been worse. We, we, we could have lost you, my friend. We could have lost you. But thank you, thank you for once again for happy you, bro. thinking of us during the whole time while he's on, on, on his uh, COVID bed, lying naked, rubbing himself. <laughs> and shitting myself. And shitting himself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Ah, uh, so guys, I'll get vocal here. Here at Turbo Tabloid, giving you a round of square circle where we review and what we've listened to and watched what we watched during the week. Well, all things that is wrestling related. Um, as for me on this side, I um, pretty much was just catching up on Cornette. You know, that's my guy. There wasn't really much on the podcasting outlets for uh, wrestling wise. I did. I, there was one note that I did make. I did mention about the thing about on uh, during the show about possibly a dark side of the ring about Ultimate Warrior, which was interesting. I was like, mm, okay, happy uh, to hear that. Yeah, that's actually a good one. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I didn't really. I mean, I caught up on whatever I needed to catch up on when it came to you know my what cultures and my uh, culture holics and stuff like that. But other than that, nah, nothing, nothing really much. Just what, what, what you got on your end, Matt. Uh, nothing. 
I, I watched a couple of YouTube videos, like top 10 uh, favorite botches. I watched um, I watched the Liv Morgan 24 or, or the Chronicles, whatever it was. It was pretty good. I mean, Sami Zayn is a fucking, yo, underrated, bro, in the, in the back. I can see Sami Zayn being a producer one day. Like, he has such an uplifting spirit with these young talent, especially like a Liv Morgan who is kind of lost right now in the shuffle. Mm-hmm. Uh um, to see them focusing on on a talent like Liv Morgan or Alana, like those underappreciated talent, it, it means a lot uh, for sure. And to see Sami Zayn wanted her in the stable with Nakamura and everyone was pretty cool as well. Um, always, I like I like when you see other talent look out for other talent. You know what I'm saying? Like that 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 hits home with me. That and I have to say that uh, I did finish watching the Broken Skull conversation with Undertaker, and as Ben would say, it was mint. It was very much mint. Uh, mint. I, I listen. We goof on Taker and and his whole uh, dear a uh, good lord, Granny. You're ninety fucking one years old. But you're still it, alive. I thought I was immortal. Shit. Rest in. No, I can't say that. No, I can't say that. Uh, but live in peace. <laughs> it's 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 a thing to where you get this man. You can finally pull back the layers on him. Like you know what? Fuck it. You know. Now you get The Undertaker, you get Mark Calloway, then you get Sting in AEW. Whoops, what? What the fuck just happened here? What? Oh, shit. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So, what do we got? We have predictions for War Games. Ben, are you excited for War Games? Yeah, definitely. I think the women's the women's one's going to actually overshadow the men's ones, I think. The women's teams are both really strong uh, on both, both ends, I think, you know, it's gonna be a strong uh, strong match that one i think this is gross and like i didn't want to mention it on the show this week but like i have to just because you know ben's here and you know it's it's it's, it's for all jokes uh i was gonna say it on wrestling rundown but it's not necessary um shotzi black card had her nudes leak this past week <laughs> and i kid you not i kid you not her nipples are the shape of hearts <laughs> can, uh, can you send me the link for that because i haven't I, seen that yet i'll, I'll, I'll got you but like i just don't understand how that's humanly possible like is there a way is there a way to get your nipples in yes shape? You, you tattoo you tattoo them to look like hearts you do she you did that them. yeah that's what she yeah. that's what she that's what she did i'm like that makes so. me like her even more well, there you go i'll send you the link ben i got you ben. No. that's that's no, no, no. that must be fucking painful like ugh, like but other than oh. that, I, I didn't. Did I? Get, I, did, I think I did. Get, as a matter of fact, I did see because I forgot to send it to you because I know that you're you're a big fan of Shotzi. I, I love Shotzi Blackheart. So, man. did you like what? Did you like what she looked like? Nah. <laughs> to be honest, it, you know, it, it's her with red hair and she has like the side fade. I, I want Shotzi now. I want how Shotzi looks now. Oh. Uh, you don't want the Shotzi when she's um, sending her poop for she's selling her poop for like five dollars and shit. I already got that. I don't like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> only on OnlyFans, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Only on yeah, OnlyFans. That's crazy, but all right, guys, let's do predictions real quick. Uh, it's gonna be a great. <laughs> he's night. talking about he didn't I watch think... anything in wrestling. And he's looking up fucking pictures of Shotzi Blackheart. That's what that's, I re- this that's wrestling related. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, I guess so. Um, I think War Games is gonna be an awesome night, man. I'm really excited uh, for the card. Uh, I do think we're gonna get a surprise or two. I'm gonna mark out if we got Alistair Black. Uh, maybe they did it. Maybe they did accept him to NXT, and uh, we don't know. Um, but first match of the night is Tommaso Ciampa versus Timothy Thatcher. I have t- I have Tommaso Ciampa winning this one because Thatcher beat him and put him to sleep last week. Okay. Um, I think I think yeah. I think um okay. I think he I'll needs it. Well. No, I think I think um, Thatcher needs to win this week. I think he needs it. Really? Yeah, I think so. I think. Oh, it, it, I would love, I'd love Thatcher to win. It's going to be a brutal match, but I'm happy whoever, whoever wins, but I think Champa will win. Yeah, either way, I'll be happy. I'm a big fan of both of them too, so it, it, it'll it be a great match regardless. That's, I, think that's, I think that's all that matters. Um, up next, we have, in War Games, we have um, a pretty interesting contest that not a lot of people would expect to have on this card, but... Fuck it, I'll just, uh, it, it's weird. Let's go with um, the, what the fuck is, oh, Damian Priest versus Leon Ruff, out of all people, versus Johnny Gargano for the North American, NXT North American Championship. Um, Leon Ruff, the, the surprise out of the gate. Um, who is champion? Can't believe it. I, I'm going to go with 
Uh, I have Johnny Gargano winning back the championship by cheap tactics and pinning Leon Ruff. Dear God, I hope not. Uh, let's get the belt back on fucking Damien, please. I think I think Leon Ruff's going to win. I think Gargano oh and Priest are going to fuck each other up so much, and Ruff's going to sneak the sneak the pin and sneak the win. That I, could happen. That I would. Happen. I cannot. I, I I cannot say that's a far fetched fucking thing to see, bro. That can be. That can happen. So uh, the match that I'm not looking forward to though is Dexter Loomis versus Cameron Grimes. I've seen this way too many times. Hey Ben, I sent something to you, Ben. <laughs> I will certainly be watching that after. Oh God, this guy's gonna fat <laughs> after this shit. He's gonna fat. Or maybe when it go, maybe when it go bad later. Yeah. That's oh, one God. thing. Could, COVID can't take that away from him. Damn right. <laughs> it did for a couple of weeks, but yeah, true. My son was on a break. Uh, Dexter Loomis versus Cameron Grimes. I have a Dexter Loomis winning. Um, actually, you know what? Fuck that. Cameron Grimes wins. Uh, I think it's. I think. I think. I think Cameron Grimes needs a win here. Besides being a fucking absolute joke, uh, he he need. I'm gonna go with Grimes. I'm going with Loomis. Uh, I, I I don't. I just don't know why. I'm really tired of this fucking um, this this fucking program. I think it's just stupid. This reminds me of the Boogeyman versus Booker T. Yeah, it's like it, down that fucking line. It's, yeah, it's annoying because I like both guys. Like I, I like Loomis and I like Cameron Grimes. But yeah, that. It needs to end, and I think the only way it'll end is if Loomis wins. So I'll go for a Loomis win. Yeah. All right, that's a good. Uh, there we go. Which so Ben? Loomis... By the way, how do you think you? How do you think you got COVID? You got? You think you got it from work? Uh, yeah, more than likely got it at work because um, three people who worked the same night as I did when I started getting the symptoms, they all got it as well. And then uh, we had a bit of an outbreak in the home, so yeah, that's more than likely how I got it. Oh, okay. Uh, be careful out there. Like Bound to happen in my line of work at some point. And you guys are getting the vaccine like tomorrow, right? <laughs> it's like soon. Yeah, we we use some sort of weird fucked up vaccine. So if I come on next week and I look like, you know, Brock Lesnar and I'm blue and, and I'm blue, then you know I've had the vaccine. If ben, if ben gains a third eye, we'll know what happened. He's a fucking character exactly. from Guardians of the Galaxy or some shit. Yeah. If I come back as uh, Dax and fucking uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, then you know so much going on. That's great. What else you got? Um, <laughs> we got Olski. Women's women's war games matches. We have Candice LeRae, Tony Storm, and Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez versus Shotzi Blackheart, Io Shirai, Ember Moon, and Rhea Ripley. Um, I got. This is tough. This is tough. I think I'm gonna go with Team Team Shotzi Blackheart on this one, and uh, I think it sets up Blackheart possibly getting a championship match in the near future. Or Ember, whoever, whoever pins for their team, we'll get them. We get a shot at EO next, but not, it's not going to be EO uh, to, to win the to win it. But I, I, I got team uh, team Shotzi. I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with team Candice. I think that um, tonight we're going to see the heels go over in this one, uh, and uh, this might be the beginning of the swan song for Rhea because Rhea might go away and might pop up at a, a Royal Rumble. I'm going to go for Team Candice as well. And I think Io Shirai is going to have some sort of weird turn, maybe like, because she's not really a face. She's not really a heel. She's kind of in the middle. So maybe she walks out. I don't know. I, th- I think Team Candice, though. I think they've got the stronger team. But I, but I do think they will all be coming. Team Shotzi's team will be coming out in a giant tank with all of them on it. <laughs> Sounds like about right. Sounds about right. Uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Believe me. Believe me. Um, and finally, on NXT TakeOver, we have Undisputed Era versus Pat McAfee, Pete Dunne, Oni Lorkin, and Danny Burch. I still don't know their name of the group, uh, but um, this is actually going to be tough. I'm going to go Undisputed Era here. As much as I think Pat, Pat McAfee's team will win, I'm going to go Undisputed Era just to be the devil's advocate. Uh, who you got, Who you got, Ben? Uh, I'm going that guy called Pat McAfee and the, his team, and I think we might see Undisputed Era on the main roster at some point very soon if they lose. But, again, I like, I like both, so I just want it to be a good match. And, obviously, it's the second time we get to see Pat McAfee in the ring, which will be interesting as well. I think we're going to go and see a heel sweep when it comes to war games, and Team McAfee will be going over in this one. Uh, will there be some dissension in the ranks between Undisputed Era? God, I hope not. I hope not either, but... Uh... 
I don't know. We'll see. Because in all honesty, if Undisputed Era lose this, I don't see them staying in NXT for any longer, in my opinion. I really don't. Um, so let's go to Monday Night Raw. As uh, It started off with a moment of bliss hosted by Alexa Bliss, and Randy Orton was the guest. I think this is very awkward. Randy Orton's just not a guy to come on these kind of shows. So when he interacts with Alexa Bliss in this kind of aspect, I just didn't buy it. Uh, I don't know if you guys think the same, but I just I thought it was weird. Um, Orton, of course, said he had a lot of common in, in common with the Fiend, but they're different because the Fiend wears his paint on the outside, and Orton bottles it up and helps him blend in. He hears voices in his head, and he knows that he must find the Fiend's weakness, and says that he's found it. Um, the lights go off, the lights come back on randomly. Out of nowhere, Alexa Bliss is in Randy's Orton's hands. Okay, how did that happen? I think she did it on purpose. How does she jump in his arms like like willingly? Like I It's a, I think she did it on purpose to piss the fiend off. I think really? it's just I, I think I it's just know. a weird that, 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 it was it a just weird doesn't make any segment. Sense. Yeah. And then like the banter she, back and forth when she's like, hey, when he, I don't know. It, it, the the ba- it's just weird. I, I, I didn't like it. Um, like, how did she get in his hands? I know Ben, you just said on purpose. Then, but like, then, in my then, opinion, then, like, then, it, it, was, it was like Randy holding her hostage, but like he didn't grab. She just she did it willingly. I don't. And and was, he, I don't understand. But then she made a she he made a comment, and then she she repeated the comment back to him, and it almost looked like she was going to be the it aggressor. Yeah, it it wasn't a real. It was one of one of the least uh, impressive. Fiend segments, not a big fan of that. It was cringe because the lights go off and Bliss goes, um, no, Randy goes, see what I mean? And the lights go completely off and Alexa goes, see what I mean? Yeah, and it just didn't. And I was was expecting that Fiend was going to beat the shit out of uh, Randy, but that didn't happen, so no. It's pretty cringe, but it was short. It got to the point. uh, Listen, it's it's, it's Fiend and and, uh, Randy at at, at TLC, whatever. Uh, up next, we had Jeff Hardy defeating Elias in a Symphony of Destruction match, and the finish was scary as fuck. <laughs> Jeff Hardy even went on a note to say he will never do a Symphony of Destruction match again, and that the idea is stupid. Uh, why? Um, I don't know. Maybe because all the weapons are music instru- musical instruments, and it was done Jeff- last and- minute. Like what and the Je- fuck? And Jeff Hardy banged his head on the fucking stairs after falling out of the ring. That was extremely scary. Um, yeah, that was scary. Doesn't, doesn't need to do it. Doesn't need to do it anymore. Doesn't need to do that shit. No, it doesn't. It it's not needed, and clearly it's not. Uh, well, then, it, once it again, this is what, this is what happens when you book a show fucking three hours before it's supposed to go on. What the fuck? You have weeks to do this. Why are we changing shit last minute? The only one that you would have changed last minute was Braun. That's the only right. one because Braun right. was injured. Other than that. Why are we why why are we still changing shit last week. minute? Yo, why why do I feel like WWE had better time prepping for their shows when they had live events? When they had more shit going around, they fucking managed to like prep their shows better. Right? Right. Why are they so last minute with a whole week of free time? Like I don't understand how you fucking do that. Like I, I don't get it. Uh also on what Raw it? this week, what happened, Ben? I was just going to say, it just shows all the drugs and all the times uh, Jeff Hardy get gets pissed and knocks to where, knocks to his head don't don't affect him anymore. Yeah, you're kind of right, though. That's pretty scary. Uh, Jeff Hardy didn't even be affected by no it. Sense no, feet, no. My guy no got sense hit with... no feeling, man. My, bang... my, my, my dude banged his head and started pounding the tambourine. Like, I would have been in the hospital, bro. But anyway, um, then we had Slapjack defeating Ricochet via pinfall after hitting the lightning spiral. Uh, Retribution, of course, wants Ricochet to join their team, saying that he deserves more. And in order to do that, they must beat the living shit out of him to prove him different. Um, in the end, of course, the numbers got better. The better of Ricochet as Ricochet loses. But Dana Brooke randomly slaps Reckoning, which I'm not calling her that. It's fucking Mia Yim. Uh, randomly s- comes out of nowhere and slaps Mia Yim like we should know what the fuck that came from. Uh, once again, random bullshit. Then we had Lana and Asuka defeating Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler via pinfall after Lana pinned Baszler after a knee from Asuka. Asuka doing the work, Lana taking the pin. Seems like that'll be the finale uh, for TLC. Do you do you see Lana and Asuka win the tag belts off Nia and Shayna? God, I hope not. But once again, it's, it's going to be one of trying the, to push this Lana, bro. It's going to be this table bullshit match. Uh, does Lana get her redemption and put Nia through a table? Probably. It's not like she's going to. I don't. 
I don't think a table could hold Nia Jax. No <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that she go. I think it's going to be one of those instances where she goes to spear her through the table and she moves and then fucking Nia goes through the table and that's how they lose and shit like that. And that's right. how Lana and Asuka win the belt and then that's when Shayna and fucking Nia separate and finally we get Shayna fucking go on an indie run finally shit. Let's get it I over hope with. so. I hope so. You can, only, you can only hope. You can only hope. Um, I, like I said, I get what they're doing with um, Nia and Shayna. They're both powerhouses. Asuka has nothing to do right now for a singles championship match. I think they're, I think we'll be seeing Charlotte and the Royal Rumble come back real soon. Um, they need the help. Can I, can I just say, I didn't watch Raw because I never watched Raw, but it sounds shit so far. Oh, it's terrible. That's why I'm speeding through it. And uh, that's why, because I, <laughs> I, I, want, I, want, I want most of the focus to be on uh, on on AEW this week because that was the main show. Uh, let's just be honest. Um, Cedric Alexander defeated Xavier Woods via pinfall, which Cedric Alexander was so impressive this week, not only on mic, but in ring. The guy grabs the mic and is, is the aggressive member of, 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 um, of the her business now and even the members of her business understand are not even understanding how where this aggression came from mm. uh cedric beats xavier like i said and it'll and um it'll create a tag match for the tag titles at tlc nothing more than that dana brooke defeats mia yim on her fucking debut um with a schoolboy pin how the fuck do you have mia yim debut when she loses fuck that After how that? the fuck she loses her mask in fucking less than yes. 30 seconds yeah I, she lost her mask i think that was done seconds. purposely though i think that was done on purpose it might have been it might have been ali yells at brooke that there's no failure in re- retribution um sorry at mia yim that there's no failure in retribution saying she failed him after brooke embarrassed him earlier on in the night so um once again rest in peace mia yim and uh i you know <laughs> fuck it she need she needs to pull away from that shit yeah, she does. Uh, badly. Um, we had uh, Seamus was a guest on Miz TV this week. Uh, with Miz and Morrison's asking why Seamus gave Drew McIntyre his family heirlooms. Uh, Seamus saying he does. It's it's rightfully his, and that uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, Miz suggests that Seamus is cash in his. Seamus cashes in his years of frustration in the tag match and allows Miz to cash in his Money in the Bank contract. Both men laugh it off. Sheamus thanking McIntyre for helping him. Just a quick build-up for the tag match later on in the night. Triple threat matches we had. AJ Styles defeating Keith Lee and Matt Riddle via pinfall with a phenomenal forearm. I was all over this match. I loved it. Yeah. Um, all together, all around, this is a great. Uh, this is this was a great match for. I think for... these three are the faces of Raw right now, besides Drew McIntyre. In my right. Opinion. And 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 for how the circumstances built and the right person won. Uh, every the rest of the guys are gonna get their fucking shot later on the line. So, I cannot wait for a Sheamus and Drew McIntyre program. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I I can't wait. It's gonna happen. I, I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. And finally on Raw, we had the tag match between uh, we had Sheamus and Drew McIntyre versus Miz and Morrison, and uh, the night ended with um, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus winning. Um, after AJ Styles inf- interfered in the match. At the end of the match, of course, we have AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre having to be separated, as it will be AJ Styles and Drew at TLC for the championship. And um, the, once again, I hate tag match main events, so kind of like I didn't care. But um, listen, Drew and Styles is jizz worthy, so I can't complain. <laughs> I can't complain. Is that good? We're good for Raw? Yeah, we're good for Raw. All right, let's go over NXT real quickly. This is going to be a speed through because NXT was good, but it's not as good as AW needs to be discussed. Period. Let's just go let's just go through NXT. Okay. Um NXT opens with the roster on the stage having the moment of silence a moment of silence for Pat Patterson with the my way from Frank Sinatra. You love to see it. You love to see it. Um NXT. Had I, like, Jamie... I like that they implemented that implemented him singing it. That was cool. Of course, that was that was really dope. Uh, and that was his favorite song. If no one knew, watch Legends House. I suggest it. Yeah, he uh, did the ca- he did karaoke on it. He was singing. yeah. If you haven't seen uh, Legends House, I suggest you do because um, a lot of the legends who's passed away in the past couple of years were on that show. I guess it's a curse being on Legends House. Um, Why they're old? People are going to die, sir. <laughs> I, I don't believe it. Um, <laughs> they're going to die, sir. Damian Priest and Leon Ruff defeat Legato Del Fantasma. Let me ask you this question because I'm fucking confused. Jordan Devlin is back, NXT Cruiserweight Champion. Where the fuck is Santos Escobar? And is he the champion too? What's going on with that damn belt? I'm confused. Well, they had a they had a um they had a, a, a vignette last week, so. I don't know. About, that's what it, 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 about them coming back and um, taking things over. I don't know what the fuck. 
don't I don't understand who the champion is. I don't even know who the cruiserweight champion is at this point. Is it fucking is I it watched Devil? And I watched NXT UK when uh, Jordan Dev <laughs> came back and he's still got a cruiserweight championship and this they are calling uh Phantasma the interim cruiserweight champion. That well that's what Devlin's calling him anyway. So well, them two are gonna face off at some point. All right. I'm excited to see that. Uh but um, Damian Priest and Leon Ruff win the match. Of course, they stare down Gargano after the match, uh, just to promote their triple threat for NXT Takeover. We get Cameron Grimes defeating August Gray. If you don't know who August Gray is, he is one of Timothy Thatcher's students. Um, and the match happened because Grimes cut a promo on Loomis after the match. But the match happened because, um, sorry, let me see my notes. Yeah, August Gray comes in the ring, then Cameron Grimes comes out. I guess it was just to get a quick win over a jobber um, for his match against Dexter Loomis. Like I said, he cuts a promo on Loomis after the match, saying that Loomis was a mis- made a mistake asking to be strapped to a real man like Cameron Grimes. That's kind of gay. Um, not in a bad way. I'm just saying, mook. <laughs> uh, he puts the strap on himself and on Gray and kicks Gray's ass even more. Mm. Loomis replaces Gray and then kicks Grimes' ass. They have a quick segment, blah, blah, blah. And then we have um, Jake Atlas versus Tony Nese. And Jake Atlas picks up the win here. I'll be the first one to say it. I know this is a hot take, but I see nothing in Jake Atlas. Nothing more than a Cruiserweight champion in my eyes. But he could prove me wrong 100%. I'm not saying this is my concrete opinion, but it's my opinion He's right finished. now. His finish is all right, and he's known as he's he's gay, isn't he? He's out there as gay, so they're probably promoting that a little bit, maybe. Yeah, listen, I'm all for it. Uh, the match was okay. The match was it was good. Uh, I love Tony Nice. Um, uh, but but Jake Atlas, he needs to prove more for me. He needs to do more. Uh, I I, I uh, he does. After the match, he was interviewed, and he said he's taking one step forward and two steps back all his life, but he never gives up, as a normal face says, and he's going to. A- He's going after Santos Escobar. Uh, once again, I don't know who the fucking champion is, so maybe it could be Jordan Devlin. I don't know. Um, I don't fucking know. Um, Red, what do you think about NXT this week? Honestly, it wasn't. It was the only the only thing that was watchable or, or something to care about was just the build up to the War Games. That was it. Exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent. We had a segment with Zia Lee and Boa um, going into the water. Yeah, I don't know what still, to... yeah, I, I can't even come up with a reason for that, but okay. Yeah, don't don't know what to say about that. Um, we had, I think it was Imperium versus Gr- Grizzled Young Vets. What do you thought about that tag match? Because those are two pretty good good tag no, teams. No, solid match. Um, I I thought maybe they could have saved this match for the pre-show at Takeover. Didn't need to do it then and there. True, true. Uh, like I said, they're they're two. Um... They're both heels, aren't they? Yeah, that's the um... NXT's really adapting the AEW vibe, huh? I guess. Grizzled young vets, Grizzled young vets are fucking awesome as well. Yeah, so. the they, are, they are good. Yeah, they're they're and and, Zach, and UK they're amazing. Yeah, no. Zach Gibson on the mic is fucking gold as well. No, it's He's uh, one of the I'm, I'm, one of the I'm, rare I'm Brits I can understand. <laughs> yeah. his, his accent's fucking gross. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, a, he's a scouse. He's from Liverpool. He's a scouse. So he's fucking horrible. He'll yeah. rob you anytime he can. <laughs> wow. We we call them bin dippers over here in Stoke, which a, a bin is a trash a trash can, as you guys call it. So a, a, a bin a bin what? A bin dipper, like the bin dipper. Okay. Oh, trash a, cans oh, and a, food out. Oh, garbage picker. Okay, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this isn't any new. This isn't a spoiler, but uh, Pat McAfee's a very good promo. Delivered an amazing promo this week to sell the match on Sunday. Undisputed Era were represented earlier in a video. And them dining, uh, that was pretty cringe. Undisputed Era in suits in a limousine, dining, and all that bullshit. Pat McAfee, of course, mocks them for doing that, saying that that was trash. Um, do you know what I think? Do you know how I think that might end? That match might end with Pat McAfee pinning Adam Cole. Just that might be. be, yeah. Just might be. Golden. It could happen. That it could happen. But uh, I'm all for this. This was expected for months. Um, this 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 group versus Undisputed Era for War Games was was, was was something that I'm definitely looking forward to. And uh, the build up they had this week on NXT was okay. The main build up they that was focused though this week was the women's um War Games matches. We had Raquel Gonzalez versus Shotzi Blackheart in a War Games Advantage ladder match. I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um. 
for the first time ever, I think the baby faces earned the war games advantage. I really, I, I, I really think that a, a face has never won the war games advantage before, and uh, that's good to know. Um, Shotzi won. Uh, the match was sloppy. I'll be honest with you guys. I wasn't a big fan of this one. Um, Shotzi is good. She needs a little more to be a little more comfortable. And Raquel is good. Like I get, they just need tuning. It's NXT for a reason, guys. It, NXT was originally a developmental fucking brand in my eyes it still is for for some parts and uh give them some fucking slack uh Shotzi wins uh, of course Raquel Gonzalez broke free to climb the ladder during that point in the middle of the match but then Io Shirai springboards onto the back of Gonzalez which is really cool and uh I thought that was fucking amazing allowing Shotzi to win it was fun it was sloppy it was a fucking train wreck what do you guys thought about the main event of NXT oh it's gonna be like I said uh Ben pretty much said this is gonna probably be the one that steals the show. So this this leading up to it um, helps the build up. And then believe me, that woman's that that woman's division right now direly needs that. They do. They definitely do. So let's go to AEW. I know this is the the hottest show that we have to talk about this week, as it was Winter is coming. The worst, the the worst name in pay per view history, if you want to call it a pay per view. <laughs> they literally said Game of Thrones. Okay. Um, where's where's the great balls of fire, Olski? Uh, it's it's a t- it's a little less it's a little less worse, but it's 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 up there. I don't think it was great that bad. Great balls of fire was actually a really good good event, to be fair. Yeah, it was a good event, but the name was the, the, name, the name the name was fucking awful. I don't think Winter is coming back is bad. I think he's just fucking it's desperate. Is desperate. It's corny. Geeky as fuck. Is, geeky as fuck. Yeah. That's like that's like that that's like that's like me calling an event the Daily Bugle from Spider Man. Like I'm not like no. <laughs> the like, Daily Bugle. No, like no. AEW to, Assemble. A, yeah, AEW AEW Avengers Assemble. That's next. Um, so let's go to AEW. <laughs> we had the Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal, which I was extremely confused about this battle royal because MJF was in it and. I, I, I okay. Let's just go through it. I don't understand what the fuck this was. It was a clusterfuck. Twenty competitors. It, it, um, the nitty gritty. The last couple of people remaining were Miro, MJF, Wardlow, Sammy Guevara. Um, of course, MJF and the Inner Circle taking everyone out as a group. Uh, we had uh some strong points with Miro this week. I, I spoke to Red privately on the phone about that. Uh, Miro did look a little stronger this week, having sizes up with Warlow, in my opinion. I think I think they made, in the ring they treated him a little bit better than just a fucking joke uh, this week. So I'm happy to see that uh, during that match because after then he went back to the video game shit and I was over it. Um, the winner of the match though was of course um, it was Orange Cassidy, um, which God help us all. Come on, really. uh, of course it was. You you didn't. But <laughs> but, but multiple times. But during the match, the Dark Order is helping Hangman Page from being eliminated. Crowd surfing with him, which once again, Cole Cabana. It's been two months, and you're still confused what group you're in. Can you just be all in or all out? Like I don't understand what the fuck your deal is. Um, uh, Hangman saved multiple times throughout the night. Wardlow teases that he's gonna turn on MJF multiple times throughout the night. Um, Matt Hardy was in there dumping Isaiah Cassidy first. Um, Scorpio Sky eliminated Sean Spears. Sean Spears then used the, the the glove, the loaded black glove, to eliminate him. It was it was it was not bad, but like just the finish uh, confuses me. So, if MJF won the battle royal, who would he be facing? He would he would automatically retain it. Who, I, I, because now because now next week Orange Cassidy won the battle royal, so now it's M- Orange Cassidy versus MJF for the ring next week. I thought the winner of the battle royal won the won, fucking won the, ring. won the ring. Like I said. That, well, once again, it, they want you to just figure it out once they put it together in the ring. They said, okay, you fucking decide what this is all about. I I, I didn't get it. And this is the problem that I have with AEW, but apparently people love it. Yeah, no. Too no. much too much too much shit going on in one fucking match for me. Right? Yeah. There's about there's about forty storylines going on in, in and I'm not the cleverest, so I can't figure all this shit out. It's too much it's too much. It's way too much. No, yeah, you know what it is, is because people believe that if you were able to follow Game of Thrones that you could follow this. I don't I don't need I don't need my fucking wrestling to be a jigsaw puzzle. It's fucking yeah. annoying. Um then we had Chris Jericho defeating Frankie Gazarian, which um interesting direction for Jericho. Um I, I, I want to see Jericho and Daniels um, in my opinion, next, but uh, it was okay. Um, Daniels has like been like not 
existent in a while. No, he hasn't. So I want to see him and Jericho go at least once. Um, it was okay. It was okay. It did the job. It did the job. Of course, um, it builds up SCU a little bit in a possible feud with MJF and all the, the whole the goons. But it was fun for the night. Then we had Britt Baker defeating Layla Hirsch, which um, is she their new MMA broad? I guess. Like once again, put somebody out there that I have no idea what the fuck is because you know why? Because I'd don't, rather yo, I'd rather them sign Melina right now. You they don't sign like a Melina. But like, you bring these, you bring this woman out here, and I don't, I, I you don't explain to me who they are. I don't know who the fuck she is. I'm once supposed again, to no, automatically no, no, AW, know. AW relies on us to watch dark. Oh, that's it's, what it is. It's like it's like the Star Wars. It's like if Force Awakens um, it, um, assumed all of us read all of the mini books that Star Wars came out with in the past ten years. Oh, don't and even say that because apparently the Mandalorian is telling you guys you better fucking watch the old um, cartoons and shit. Well, I am uh, saying absolutely nothing about Star Wars because the last time I said something, I got muted. So I'm saying nothing. <laughs> I'm, I haven't I haven't watched it in two yet. So if you spoil it, you're getting fucking super kicked. Anyway. Uh, Dr. Britt Baker won, of course, whatever. That was a quick build-up for her and Rosa. Um, Thunder Rosa! Thunder Rosa. Uh, Britt Baker at Thunder Rosa is going to be a good project. I'm excited to see it, but nothing more than that. Young Bucks want to be fighting champions, so they'll give TH2 an opportunity to earn a title shot next week. See, that's what makes me happy. Not random championship matches. Not saying I'm giving you the number ninth ranked team a championship match. No, 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 no. You have to earn a championship match by beating the champions first. Non-title first, then get to the championship match. I'm sick and tired of seeing these tag title matches on AEW where people get random shots at the belt for no reason. Yeah, but earn, that, the fucking, so, earn the fucking – earn yeah, your shot. But that depends on the situation, though. That can't, that can't happen all the time. So is uh, that young buck that was injured, is he okay now? Is, is he fully, I guess is he so. Fully fit now? He's fighting through it. The thing is, about three weeks, four weeks ago, they were heels, and now they're uh, faces again and facing heels all of a sudden. It's just a, it's it's a bipolar, bipolar bullshit, bro. Random as fuck. Yeah. Just simple. I just like simple, simple storyline. Yeah, pretty much. I, I, it's, it's, it's everything's now is a, it's a, it's an intertwining tale of, of. Three different novels in one fucking book. Whatever. I don't know what the fuck. It's 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 wild. But yeah, we'll get that next week. Um Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison are now officially a tag team and their name are the Varsity Blondes. What a waste of Brian Pillman Jr. For what fuck's a, sake. Yep, exactly. What a Just fucking name waste. Them out, that's what you do with Brian Pillman. You throw him in a you throw him with a jungle boy wannabe and call themselves the varsity blondes. Red, what do you think about that? You guys just said it all. I said, what a waste of Brian Pillman. This kid right now should be in role reversal. You should have him in uh, mid-card hunt, and you should have Miro going for a fucking big, like, main title look. Not, but not, listen, let me not say go for the title because this was the discussion that I'm having at fucking, and let me just segue to it quick. Had a discussion on, on, the Facebook, uh, on a Facebook group page about, how they're booking this shit when it comes to Miro. And it's like, because he, of course, everybody who's bitter has to fucking throw rocks at WWE when they leave. But, you know, he's upset about how they booked him in WWE. And it's like, well, yeah, AEW's not doing you any favors either. And, you know, the back and forth con- conversation is basically, well, you know, he cho- he chooses his own creativity. Yeah, that proves that no one should be doing their own fucking creativity. I mean, let's be honest here. There's a reason why we have directors and writers for fucking movies. Somebody need. It's rare that you'll get a director and a writer act in their own fucking movie. It's 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 not done often. So with Miro's shit, it's like, all right, let's pull back. You done sat there and booked powerhouse Hobbs into a a a, a team Taz kind of thing when you could have easily slid, slid Miro in there. But yeah, what did you do? You made him a fucking Donkey Kong addict and is afraid that someone's gonna break his fucking Among Us fucking app game, whatever the fuck it is we're doing here. I mean, honest. I mean, what 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 are we doing the only, here? The, the only bonus about Miro being with Kip Saban is we get to see Penelope Ford every week. I mean, yeah, I mean, but you could also watch that on YouTube if you want. You could watch that on. <laughs> Which, by the way, fact, in fact, uh, you said it doesn't happen much, but it actually it just was confirmed that Oscar Isaac, um, Poe Dameron in uh, Star Wars, he is directing the, the Metal Gear Solid game, and he just casted himself as Solid Snake. Oh, great! 
That, yeah. yeah I'm, all right. I, I, not, if they don't get Kojima to fucking write that shit, that I'm movie's going to be trash. That movie's going to be trash. I'm not, um, I'm not. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but even so, it's it's... Listen... It seems like everybody in AEW is doing that. Everybody's writing their whole, their own fucking storylines, and they're and Khan is sitting there going, "Oh great! Oh my! Oh, oh God! This this is awesome." Ben will tell you, Ben, isn't Khan like a shit fucking owner in, in football over there? Yeah, Fulham get fucking rinsed every week. <laughs> I mean, I cause I cause everything. They're in a division above my team, but yeah, they're not. They're not. They're not a great football. They're a soccer team. Right. Let's just say that. Yeah, I mean, so you know, you 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 you're, you're riding yourself into a corner when it comes to this fucking Miro shit, and you know, you know you, this is what what wrestling is. It's not what you, you old fogies want. But I got two guys who are younger than me who are saying the same shit. Why are you making this so fucking complex? This is so out of the realm that I I need I need like a a a, a protractor, a compass, and a and a fucking yardstick to figure out how these stories mesh together. I don't get it. All I'll say is, as a guy who used to fucking watch WCW from start to finish, AEW is more WCW than WCW ever was, and people don't <laughs> seem to recognize that this shit's going down. There's people in WCW who wrote their own storylines, and that's going on in AEW yeah. at the moment. Yeah. The best, the two best wrestling brands for storylines at the moment is Impact, and NXT UK. Why? Because they don't have ridiculous fucking storylines. Okay, Impact does have a couple. Impact is pretty... waiting, bro. <laughs> yeah, it... I know they do have some ridiculous things sometimes, but they're pretty solid. And NXT just has normal fucking storylines. Sure. That's all I ask for. Yeah. Normal storylines. I shouldn't have to think too much to watch wrestling. <laughs> it's like, it's like Jesus. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. So what else we had? Uh, what else we had in AEW? Also, in AEW, we had a quick segment with Hikaru Shida cutting another terrible promo pretending to be scared about Abaddon after a random clinking sound in the background. Oh, okay, like she, that. Is, she is fucking freaky, though. Who, Abaddon? Yeah, she is, but like... She's all, you, all, all you heard was someone bash the fucking back steel with like, and she like freaked out. Like, oh, I got to go. Sorry. I'm like, what? Why don't she come all out right. with a fucking kendo stick? Why don't she just hit her over the fucking head with that shit? <laughs> yeah. uh, listen, man. To, Break uh, it and uh, stab I'm her. Out. Stab her through the heart like a fucking walker in The Walking Dead, bro. Let's cut this shit over fucking. Listen, I'm nitpicking. Listen, I'm. Nitpicking. By, by the way, have you seen Abaddon without the makeup? It's pretty cute. She's yeah, all right. she's all right. Yeah. She's I. Right. She's I. Right. She's I. Right. She's I. Right. Um, she's I. Right. Um. Yo, Liv Morgan is, and, and, and Liv Morgan is seg- adorable, and the, last, bro. and the last two segments of AEW, let's go through it. It was amazing. I don't know what to say. Um, the first one, it was Cody Rhodes and Darby Allen versus Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. Please get that fucking name away from me. <laughs> I miss Will Hobbs. Where the power? You're pulling WWE shit, man. No more Willie Hobbs! Um, it it was it was a, it was a good match. Hobbs was the star. He fucking grabbed Darby Allen by two by both of his ears to do a fucking flip. Like, are you kidding me? Like, it was it was a fun match. Cody, of course, doing what he usually does: springboard cutter. Um, Allen um, got a blind tag. Cody attacked Hobbs with a suicide dive. Um, of course, Darby Allen wins um, by a coffin drop on Starks. Um, it was then then after the match, Taz and Team Taz beat up. Uh, Cody and Darby, and we get the lights going out. Can and... I, just, I know you had. I know you want to rush to it, but can I just play it quick? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. The third member of Team Taz. The numbers game is going to catch up. Taz's men are. In... His song is fire, by the way. Oh yeah, I love the song. I love the song. What? Sting beating Ric Flair at 
I marked out. I marked out. Sting got his hair back! Sting got his hair back! His hairline's back! This has fucking dreadful. He's a legend, it's this man. Grandpa Sting! Was it walking with a purpose? A caution purpose. Stairs at the. Oh, that was. And these two have never been. He does it as well in a in age order as well. I can't believe I'm seeing Excalibur. I can't believe that is that is a good no. Good job, Ben. He does do it in age order. Eighteen years, Sting is back on TNT. So Sting comes back and everyone's excited. I'm not. I give a fuck. I, don't think Cody I thought it was a cool moment. Hey, listen, he's not gonna no wrestle. He's not gonna. He's not gonna wrestle. He's not gonna. I think he is gonna wrestle. I think he is gonna wrestle. If he wrestles, then it's gonna be a very bad match. Yeah. Like, nothing's gonna be. Nothing's gonna be done. He can't take many bumps. His neck's fucked up. I think there were. All right, Red, we, we can cut this off now, man. And many millions around watching. He uh, he looked at Darby and said, "You know, you gotta finish your face, kid." <laughs> right. You gotta, you gotta finish your face, man. Which I, I marked out for the Sting and Darby stare down. I did. I love Darby Allen. Um, I think he's the. I think he is the the future. He's a great young kid, and I think him and Sting staring down was fucking ass. Was badass. I Listen, think. I think you know what it is. I. It's a great bittersweet Dude. moment, man. That's what it is. It's not about. It's not about. It's not about uh, an old guy coming and taking a, the kid, young kid's spot. It's about. Oh no no, no it's not on that. TNT. But but people are telling me that, oh, he's going to do this. They're going to do this shit WWE does. I'm like, no. I think Sting's role is just going to be um, back, mostly backstage. But when he comes out every week, it's going to have purpose. Listen, like, listen, if he could put over a Darby Allen, like, I ain't complaining. No, nah, I, 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 now that I look at it again, like, it is an exciting moment. It is a hair standing moment for, for many. Like, I'm, to be honest, like, when like, it, like, like, Shivani said the fucking call and everything. That shit was, like, throwback, boy. It's still, it, even that was, like, I rather had been that you said it, and it, it didn't sound ex like you were shocked. I wanted more shock. It looked as though it was like you already knew that he was coming out because the way Jim Ross came out, it was like, oh, you know, he hasn't been here for... Jim Ross, Jim Ross can never be excited anymore. Because uh, he's yeah, drunk yeah. most of the time. What do you mean? Let's be, let's be honest. Allegedly. <laughs> Before allegedly. We say, allegedly. But, you know, yes, there is the pageantry. There is the 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 the, the nostalgic of it. Right. You get that. And, it, and it's cool. I don't think this was the spot for him to do it. I think this is a weird spot to do it. I do like the way that... that Ben didn't notice that it was uh, the breakdown of the, the generations in which he, he stared everybody down. But it's also when you look at Sting, and even when he got up from fucking kneeling by Cody, he needed to use the bat to fucking stand up. It's like, look whose granddad came into the fucking ring. It's like, right. shit. But, but <laughs> tell like grand, like tell Grandpa like Halloween is over, you fucking... <laughs> Fucking weird, but yes, I do I like the nostalgia. I really did. I do. I, it's, I'm not gonna say it's great. I think it was. I think it was. It was fun. It was cool. It was cool. It was a cool moment. To see Sting back on TNT after so long. Uh, it's official. Sting's been in WWE, TNA, um, AEW, and WCW. WCW? Yeah. He's been everywhere. He's but a Grand he's, Slam. Yeah, he's a yeah, Grand he's Slam everywhere. whore. He's been everywhere. He's a, he's glass a Grand Slam, slam money My whore. <laughs> My, he, my, my thing with it was, like, when the lights went out, I knew it was. No, I didn't. I, wasn't I, going, didn't. Hmm, I wouldn't do this is going to be. I knew it was going to be Sting at some I point. honestly didn't think that. Like, I was like, hmm. Like, I was one. I, I, once I saw the crow on the screen, I was like, it's Sting. But, like, before that, I was like, hmm, it could be someone else. I don't but know. We had, but no, we, had, we, had, like, we had thought that he was going to make his presence during um, Full Gear or something like that. So, uh, this. The thing with it is, I, th I don't know whether you guys agree. It might just be me thinking it, but. I think AEW have thought, well, you know, WWE have had a good send-off for Undertaker. They've had him with his last match, and they've done this, and they've done that. Sting deserves that, so why don't we be the guys that do that with Sting? And I think they'll do, like, a similar thing with Sting as they did with Undertaker, because Sting did deserve that in WWE, I think, personally. It, very true. That is true. And and it's not to say that they, because we even spoke about it, like we, we, we missed out on great opportunities 
with him in WWE, you know, fantasy booking that we could have had done there. And it is, it, it's, it, he was misused there. He was mis, mis, um, he mishandled there, but it's once again, you know, AEW has become the wasteland of old fucking guys and old stars. And it's unfortunate that you're still a year into this company and you're, 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 you're pulling, you're, 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 you're um, drawing an audience from people who are your demographic. They're your age. They're you guys' age. Me, I would appreciate it. People older than me would appreciate it. It only, it only exemplifies how desperate you are to reach out for somewhere else and you're not getting it. You're you're still not going to get it. And I guarantee you, give it a month, two months, they're not, they're not going to know any fucking clue what to do with him and him being there. They're not. Oh, see, it's going to be positive about it, but you're right. It probably will happen, but, you know. See, the thing, but the thing with me is with Sting, like, I didn't like Sting when I, when I watched WCW, so I, I, I'm not a huge Sting fan. You're not going to like him now. That's okay. I, no, 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 it's not that. I, I, I understand why people like him, and I'm not judging anything yet until I see how they use him. If they use him piss poorly, which I am 100% expecting them to do, I mean, if they have a match between Sting and Jericho, it'll possibly be the last man standing alive match then yeah I'm, I'm just i'm just gonna see how they use him before i judge if it's gonna be shit or not the only I thing just, I, i'm just not a fan of sting but if they use him properly then fair play the only thing i care about is if they just fucking make the, the paint to face squad and just have him fucking darby and fucking thunder rosa just jam together and just make them a click that's it that's all i care about and if you want to throw me, you know, kill me now and, kill me now do you know <laughs> And that, if that's the case, you know who else needs to come in? The motherfucking insane clown posse, baby. <laughs> of course, you got to add the oh. juggalos, don't you? Got to put the juggalos oh, yeah. in there. I haven't mentioned Naked Midian in this episode, so ICP can be mentioned instead. There you go. We, we, we'll, we'll, we'll reverse we reverse the um, the gimmicks for this one. And finally, what do you have there on, on AEW, Matt? And finally, Kenny Omega is taking the AEW World Championship to Tuesday nights for maybe one night, for maybe two. You don't know, as it is official. Kenny Omega is the new AEW World Heavyweight Champion. Moxley versus Omega happened this past week, and with with the help of Don Callis, which uh, multiple people are reporting that his contract for Impact is up by next year, and he will be leaving to become Kenny Omega's full time manager um, during this run. Uh, Don Callis, uh, with the help of Don Callis, Kenny Omega wins by cheating by being a heel, and him and Don Callis run to a limousine. With the words, you want to know what we have to say? Come check us out on Tuesday on Impact Wrestling. I know Ben likes this. I know he does. He's a big Impact guy. Listen, it has been confirmed there is some sort of partnership with AEW and Impact that down that is happening right now. Don't know the extent of that partnership. Don't know if we see a few matches, a one shoot. We see a, a Impact versus AEW pay per view. That's all speculation. But what I can confirm is that Kenny Omega is the new AEW champion. Moxley will be taking um, one more match, and I guarantee you he's going to go take care of Renee with that baby. A little time off, which earned, earned. You've been champion for a long time. And a little break doesn't hurt anybody. And um, Kenny is your guy. Kenny's the man. Kenny is the champion. And what do you guys think? Because I am – I'm happy. I'm happy to see Kenny – finally have a nice heel role um, i'm excited to see what he could do kind of reminds me of the roman reigns heel turn i'm like i'm excited to see what you could do how much of a dick you could become and uh i can't i can't give my opinion until i see it so i'll actually be checking in on tuesday night <coughs> Joe, right. do you want to go first, go first Jay? No, 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 no. Oh, I, I just, I just, I'll, I'll, I'll just close it out with with uh, my thoughts of this but go ahead ben because i know you're excited about the okay. impact look um, I think the championship change needed to happen. Um, I like Moxley. His matches are always good. Always does good promos, but I think he's a bit, he got a bit stale for me. So Omega coming champion, awesome. Don Callis, I absolutely fucking love. I've always liked Don Callis. I liked him um, as a um, announcer in Impact. He did a good job. Um, Impact in AW is a good move for both. I think. Because Impact has by far the strongest women's division. That's what I'm saying. Any, that trade-off makes in sense. In any brand. So that's good for AEW because 
They've got fucking good women in uh, Impact. And they've also got a very, very strong tag team division in Impact as well. So I think it helps AEW. And I also think it helps, obviously helps Impact as well. Um, if you just think about some of the matches that you can have, I mean, you could have the North versus FTR. You can have the North versus the Good Brothers. You can have, you know, all the women versus all the women. And you could have Hangman Page versus guys from Impact. It's, it's a good... It's a good marriage if it happens. And Don Callis as full-time manager of Kenny Omega is only only going to be a good thing. So I was I was happy with it. So I, I'm, I'm all right with it. The match itself wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. But what happened needed to happen. So, yeah, I'm all right with it, to be fair. Not a fan of the whole managerial thing, but the big pickup that they do get is the fact that Callis is there. And Callis is a fucking wrestling genius. He's the equivalent of Paul Heyman. Uh, yeah. He's done great things in Impact, and I think that creative mind needs to be in All Elite, that person, mm -hmm. because that's going to be the filter that, that fucking siphons the bullshit. Uh, yes, the women's division is needed in uh, All Elite as a trade-off. Yes, the tag is needed in the trade-off. The problem is, where the fuck are you going to find Impact to watch this shit? People in the States can't find it. They're going to have to fucking... Yeah, we you, we, get a, every Friday, we get it every Friday night over here, so we're all right. Our problem is we got to find it, and then the other shit is that now we need another fucking outlet to be a part of this because now not only do we have to watch AEW Dark to understand this shit on YouTube, now we got to go to fucking Twitch to fucking connect the dots here again. We got to find another fucking outlet to this, which would contradict the shit that I would say about Ring of Honor joining WWE because we definitely can't find Ring of Honor. Um... But also with that, um, it's the positive note for me is I'm happy because for years we've been saying that we need something of uh, territorial branding kind of crossover in wrestling. And this is the beginning of where this should go. This needs to happen, honestly, because you're basically saying we got to fucking team together because if WWE doesn't want to work with anybody then fuck them we just got to do our own shit and, and come together and do this it's a um, this is the this is a test run this is going to be a test run for these guys and I think that with um, the talent that's on the table that's there the fantasy booking that we have there that could be I think there could be magic happening but I, I'm guaranteeing that it's not going to be on Impact's TV it's definitely going to be on fucking AEW CB you're going to see this and lastly to think, this, yeah. Uh, last, yeah. And lastly to this, um, um, God, I, I just lost my thought. But go ahead, Ben. I'll get it. Go ahead. And like I said, I think it's a, it's a good. It's in a way, I'm quite happy for Impact because you know people people are saying, oh, they're going to go out of business soon at this at some point. They haven't got enough they've money. Never been, they've, been, they've always been saying that. They've been strong for like ten years. It's, this is what I'm saying. They always hang on in there. And, and I think they've got a very bad rep. Like, if I speak to anyone about, if I say, oh, you need to watch Impact, oh, TNA's fucking wank, it's been wank for years. If you fucking watch Impact, I've been watching Impact since the start. I've been watching TNA since the start. Impact is fucking solid. Yeah, they've got some ridiculous fucking storylines, but that's entertaining. That's entertaining for, like, the younger audience. Right. So I'm happy for the guys in Impact who have been working the fucking arses off and getting no recognition for it to now they're going to be on mainstream tv and people are going to see people like rich swan eric young all ego ethan page in the north against guys like ftr and they're gonna be like you know what i like these guys i'm gonna watch impact so i think it's a massive and if you said to me like who's the mvp for the week impact wrestling 100 well that's not i'm obviously gonna say some nxt uk guys <laughs> but impact wrestling have done a very very good i mean i just hope they don't get used like bitches and then just thrown to the side if it doesn't work. But it's good for these guys to be on national telly that more people are going to watch them and see them. So I think it's it's good for both, 100% good for both, oh. especially for the women the women of uh, Impact if they're going to be on AEW as well because, let's be honest, AEW's women are absolutely fucking diabolical and then Impact's women are fucking awesome. Yeah, the, the, the last... Oh, that, this was the last thing I was going to say. Um, the... um. The the impact bookings have already been, I mean uh, the tapings are already done so you're not gonna see any recordings you're basically just gonna see um, vignettes or probably one big spot in the in like towards the end of the year 
but all the impact uh, matches and, and recordings have already been set for the end of the year. So you, you probably won't see anything huge until the last impact of the year. So that's pretty much that pretty much size that up. Anything else, Matt? Matt, you all right over there? Who, me? Yeah, you all right? Yeah, I got to go. Huh? My mom's like yelling at me to leave the house right now. <laughs> like, oh, she's really? Like, she's, like, she's sparking at me right now. Yeah, she's telling me if I don't leave in like 10 minutes, I'm getting the we can We're not going anywhere. All right, so wrap this up well, in five she, minutes. She told me what the fuck to do. Like, uh, it's crazy. Man, you punk motherfucker. <laughs> I, I can finish SmackDown quick. Yeah, let's go through it. Yeah, I gotta go through it. Uh, the first segment of the show was Roman, Uso, and Paul Heyman um, delivering a response to Kevin Owens' brutal attack on Uso. Um, Caleb Braxton, in the beginning, was that I, – I missed that. Was that her? Was that her saying that, like – they agreed to the interview if she said those things, or was that her being a dickhead, like a heel, and actually giving him those accolades? No, no, no. That was that was the way it was. Yeah, that um, that was her saying it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good to see there. So that, but then Kevin Owens came out. Owens said that he would come to Re- um, that he would come to Reigns since Reigns didn't come to him last week. Um, Jay Uso grabs the mic and says, "We accept." Easy. Owens shuts him down and says he wants to talk to the big dog of the group. Um, they go back and forth. Owens goes ham, but then Reigns says that there's a lady in the ring um, calling himself a gentleman and that he will not do this here because there's a, there's a lady and he wants to be uh, respectful. And Owens goes, you're not a, you're not a gentleman, you're a bitch. Um, am I the only person who's over the you're a bitch in wrestling? Yeah, like, pretty that, much. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah it's That's just fucking like, who cares anymore? Like that, to me, that's the same thing. It's like, you're a jerk. Yeah, like, yeah. No, no, like uh, a cheap pop for no reason. You're being, a, uh, uh, you're being an ass. What do you think about? Um, I'll speed through the rest, but what do you guys think? This is what I want you guys to. Um, I want to definitely know um, from you guys. What do you think about the story of Reigns having to constantly t- um, treat, give Jay Uso a lesson, like keep having to? That's okay. Check, to check him. That and, works. I mean, that, he, but is it kind of is it, is it kind of making Jay look like a fucking goof? No. That's no. A- but, well, no, because he's on TV every week and he's in the main event for most things. So no, I love it. Plus, it's just like... plus, it makes Reigns even more of an arsehole and even more hated. So yeah, pretty much. Both over. Yeah. Okay, there's a wanted to see there. Uh, like I said, the open the show opened up with a ten bell salute to Pat Patterson. I was listening to music. I turned mine off for that respect right there. Uh, love love my boy Pat. Rest in peace, of course. Natalia defeated Bailey via submission. That's crazy to see with a sharpshooter. Who would have fucking thunk it? Um, Natalia winning a match against Bailey in 2020. I did not imagine to see that. Uh, the finish was the, the finish was entirely clean, marking another loss for Bailey since she lost the SmackDown title. Bianca Belair was on commentary for the match, and ba- and Bailey was largely preoccupied with Belair. So it looks like we're gonna get a Bailey and Belair program, and I'm all for it. Uh, sign me up. Uh, we get the, P- the Pat Patterson Memorial match with Daniel Bryan, Mysterio, and Big E. Which what do you guys think about Big E's new music by Wale and and the Powder back again? Powder's back up, again, man, but let's get rid of the fucking um the happy go lucky guy. Let's get to the badass man. Cut this shit out. I don't like. I don't like. I don't like. I don't. I don't like the gear. I don't like him once again sliding in the ring and humping the ring. Like, let's get serious. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm happy that while they did the music, the music is great. The powder is great, but can you walk around that you like you want to punch someone in the mouth, and not with a smile? Ha ha ha! I'm like, no, bro, get dead serious, like. I don't know who Wale or Powder is. To me, that sounds like drugs. So no, Wale pa- is a famous a rapper. Talc. He uses talc. He uses talc. And to the, to slap his yeah. hands together, he uses the talc. Yes, the oh, Olympic okay. shit. Uh, right. But we had a six man <laughs> tag between Daniel Bryan, Mysterio, and Big E versus Sami Zayn, Ziggler, and Nakamura. Of course, the, the faces win as it was a memorial match for, for Pat Patterson. Uh, quick, quick, quick uh, shout to Sami Zayn because Sami Zayn was one of Pat Patterson's biggest projects, and Pat loved Z- Sami. Uh, and uh, it, it was known throughout the wrestling world, and it, it was sad to see um, Z- Z- Zayn uh, get emotional throughout the night. Uh, after the match, the faces ran the heels from the ring, except for Ziggler, who tried to talk them down. Let me ask you this. It was Pat Patterson known for that move that Daniel Bryan did? The roll-up? <laughs> no, the groin, the groin. Um, the move after, when they cornered fucking Ziggler, and then Daniel Bryan did like the – I forgot that name of the move. The ladder. When they, when they pick him up and they drop him on his groin. Oh, oh, oh. The um... old school move. I yeah, 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 yeah. Drop. The- the atomic drop, yeah, yeah, yes, he was, yeah, atomic drop. yeah. So that, that was an ode to Pat Patterson yeah. there. Uh, I can't believe I forgot that name. It's I thought he was getting, I thought he was getting mooked for a second. I said, like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, yeah, the atomic <laughs> drop. 
Um, and they, and of course they say thank you, Pat. Which by the way, those 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 thank you, Pat, um, chants that they fucking put in there are really cringe. So fake. It's it's so fake, and it's it's I, I get why they did it because it's like it's like an ode, but <sighs> whatever. Um, Carmela and Sasha Banks were interviewed at the same time from different locations. It got real hood real quick. Um, talking about that Banks is jealous because she didn't have to even like wrestling to get into the business. She just everything was handed to her, while Sasha had to earn everything. The typical face and heel storyline there. King Corbin defeated Murphy via pinfall after help uh, after King Corbin's new henchmen are Steve Cutler and and uh, and um the fuck's his name Wesley uh, Blake Wesley Blake um the, the the former Forgotten Sons are now with King Corbin and no longer with Jackson Riker who I'm assuming will be either released or he will be repackaged by himself to a Republican Trump supporter um. <laughs> Uh, red, 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 red. What do you guys think about the alignment of King Corbin with some new henchmen? People say that it it freshens up Corbin. It gives him some sort of edge, and I think it helps. I think it gives Blake and Steve Cutler the shot that they deserve. Corbin's knights. There you go, King. I like both them. I like both them guys. So yeah, I'm allowed. King Corbin's knights. Um, of course, Mysterio. Yo, you saw Dominic Mysterio's fit that night, last night? My son was wearing the rock drip, the, 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 the turtleneck sweater, boy. My son was about to go to Latin quarters with that outfit, boy. You crazy? That, that boy was <laughs> fly. Was about to it looked it like out. a fucking um, penis helmet coming out of the fourth game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I had to say it. Uh, somebody, listen, somebody did. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great help between great help between the the henchmen, um, the new um, Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler, um, ends up running into an end of days for the pin. One, two, three. King Corbin wins. By the way, side fact, uh, you know how each wrestler has like a side of accolades when their entrance heads. You know, Buddy Murphy has been a former tag champ for NXT. You know what his fucking thing said? Aliyah Mysterio's boyfriend. Ugh. Are you fucking kidding me? Ugh. Like, are you kidding me? Come on. Uh, and then finally on SmackDown we had a um, we had a supposedly it was supposed to be a fucking tag match between Jay Uso and, and Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens and uh, who the fuck was with Kevin Owens? Um, oh Otis, sorry, yeah, Kevin Owens and Otis. It was supposed to be them two versus it them was, two. Then, what are you talking about? It was Ben. <laughs> yeah, Ben. Uh, Kevin Owens and Ben. Uh, actually, no, Ben I'm- and Ben. I look more like Kevin Owens. My mates call me Kevin Owens. All, yeah, all yeah, you're, yeah. I, 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 I can see that. Uh, but, but Roman Reigns didn't show up because he wanted to give Jey Uso the consequences he deserves after speaking out uh, earlier on in the night. It ended with, of course, Roman Reigns coming back to the ring, took the tag, and brutalized Otis outside the ring with with the steel steps. It went back and forth for a while, but then Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns went at it. And uh, but uh, and, and the night ended with Roman Reigns putting Owens in the gu- gu- guillotine choke for the disqualification. When we almost finished, did you see the promo that they did in the back when Kevin Owens was getting interviewed and then Otis came out and you know they were talking? Yeah, about that's not it's so scripted. But, but wait, but did you see when what was it? Kalisto came out with the fucking hat. I was like, yeah, the random. T- yeah, what the was he was meant about? to come out? Like that just looked like. Yep, that was a rip towards Kalisto. What? That was definitely a punishment. That was some shit. That yeah, because definitely... it looked like he accidentally like intervened in somebody's nah, fucking promo. That was, a, that was a rib. That was a rib. Oh, okay. A hundred percent. Like that was terrible. Uh, but but Roman Reigns stands tall on the night. But then Roman Reigns even gave Uso a chair shot. Um, Roman Reigns yelling at both Uso and Kevin Owens to learn their lesson and to to stand to to stand by mm. the head of the table, not against. Uh, to close out SmackDown. I think SmackDown was the best program besides AEW all week. Uh, I enjoyed AEW the most because it was kind of a pay-per-view feel. But SmackDown overall was my favorite. Um, what about you guys? I enjoyed SmackDown. Like I said, I'm, I'm the Kevin Owens thing is working for me. I, I, I'm a big fan of that. And um, it, 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 it can weave a little bit more storylines into uh, like the Sami Zayn uh, title chase as well. But uh, other than that, you know, so- solid week, solid week of wrestling, except for maybe NXT. NXT took a dip this week, but other than that, solid week of wrestling. Absolutely. So let's go through with the uh, NXT. Oh. NXT UK was my uh, was my favorite this week. Oh, say, go ahead, go ahead, do a quick recap. Go ahead. NXT UK just we got to see uh, the final of the Heritage Cup. Um, it's between Trent Seven and Akid. Akid won. 
Um, but it was a fucking brilliant match. Uh, I, I didn't know what to expect because I'm not a huge fan of A-Kid, but I like Trent Seven. Mint match. The ending was fucking horrible. You saw, you watched it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I mentioned to you that they went to the sudden death. It was a smart thing to do there. And um, yeah. I love uh, what they're going to do where uh, the, the the cup would actually be defended as a yeah. as a title. So it's a, it's a good look for UK. Let me tell you something. They, you guys over there in, in fucking in, in the UK, you guys know how to put together fucking good shows and the fans make it even better, man. It's a great, it, it, it's, we're kind of envious of that over here. And one last thing, yeah. there was a person who posted on a, on a group page that said, I miss the days of when, when I watched wrestling and not knowing it was predetermined. And I yep. wholeheartedly that's, 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 that's agree. A, that's a good cutting of promo. Yeah, I and, if, uh, and to close it out, let's do it. The superstars of the week. Let's go, Ben, you go first. Who's your MVP superstar of the week? Uh, because he won, I'll say A Kid, but A Kid and Trent Seven for putting on that match is a fucking great match. I'm, go one, go, go one. I'm gonna go say Sting. Sting is my MVP of the week. He did nothing, but he oh, shook. God. He shook the social media world of fire, and his T-shirt sold out faster than anything. Which, by the way, they only probably have five thousand of them anyway, so who cares? Um, they, look, they, they are cool merch, though, I must say, even though I don't like Sting. Yeah. And my, and my MVP of the week goes to Kenny Omega. Uh, Kenny Omega, after being lost in the woods for months, uh, I'm happy that he's champion. I'm happy to see what he could do with the belt. I'm happy to see a heel Kenny Omega, most importantly. And um, the fact that it opens up a bridge with impact, you can't go wrong with that. So Kenny Omega won all around for me. That'll wrap it up over here, ladies and gentlemen. Maddie has to go with mommy, so uh, we gotta roll out of here. <laughs> gotta take, gotta, gotta go do some shit. So. so, Ben, thanks for joining in and, and stopping in with us. As always, good to see that you're feeling better, sir. And hopefully, you're wanking the schnoodle, if you know what I mean these days. One hundred percent. Don't know what it means, <laughs> but I'll just say yes. Thank you, sir, and thank you guys for being a part of Turnbuckle Tabloid this week. Episode two hundred two will come out this week as well. I have a cutting a promo, cutting a promo this week. Uh, you're going to like this one, Ben. You should call in when we, we go live tomorrow. It'll be the hypocrisy of wrestling fans. You'll be a part of that. So make sure you call in for that tomorrow. Jay? Yes. Can I just say, by the way, I, I watched that um, program, The Wrestlers, with the uh, deathmatch stuff. Yes, yes, yes. On um, Vice. It was on, it was on at like four, 4 o'clock in the morning over here on Vice. I watched that one, and I watched the Gabe Sapolsky, is his name? Yes, the Evolve, um, the Evolve President one, Holder, yeah, yeah. I, wa I watched that as well. The Deathmatch one was fucking brilliant. Right. Uh, there's more. There's uh, there's there's an episode about Alaskan wrestlers. Uh, there's one I've with... Got an, I've got them all on record, so I've got one about uh, cross-dressing ones. Yes, those are the, um, <laughs> the, the, the Exoticos from Mexico. And they actually have one about Guatemala, oh, not Guatemala, sorry. Um, I think they're from Honduran, the women wrestlers as well out there. Very interesting, very interesting. So, guys, thank you for partaking, being a part of the show. And um, as always, as we tell you here in Turbo Tabloid, enjoy yourselves and take a bump. And we're out of here. Laters. Turbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Tabloid.